Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We give God the praise. We give God the honor. We give God the adoration for His goodness and His mercies. I look too big in this, don't I? And uh, you look too small. Come forward a little. We give God all the glory and all the honor. Uh, he's been good to us. He has blessed us in diverse ways. And I want to believe that you have enjoyed this goodness of the Lord. Hello, Nadine. It's good to see you. And uh, your life will never be the same. I believe that God is going to bless us today. I believe God is going to speak to us. God is going to speak into our lives. I believe our marriages are going to get better. And even if you are not married, you're going to be strengthened. You're going to be taught. You're going to learn more so that when you marry, you will enjoy it. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. Right? So, uh, 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 how has your week been? I hope you've had... Hello, Uweneza. Uweneza, God bless you. Uh, I believe that you've had a good week so far. And uh, things have gone well. If anything has not gone well, do not lose hope. Do not give up. Do not look back. Do not despair. Nothing is impossible with God. Your God who began it, he will accomplish it. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Nothing is impossible with him. Okay? So keep pressing on. Keep pushing on. Keep, 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 keep fighting. Don't give up. Don't look back. Don't look back because God is faithful. Most of the times, a lot of people turn back when they are just about to enter into their blessing. That should not be your story. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. Keep on believing. Keep on praying. Keep on forcing. Keep on pushing. Keep on learning. And I believe that you will get to the top. Whatever you are trusting the Lord for, the Lord will help you to accomplish it. So God bless you. God bless you. And you are welcome. You are all welcome. All welcome to this broadcast today. Uh, and if you haven't shared it, I'll be glad if you could just click on your share button. Uh, it should be somewhere on your left there on your screen. Just click on the share button. It will be awesome. So that your friends and your loved ones can join in. You can also invite specific people to come on board because uh, uh, it's going to be awesome. Nadine, I miss you. God bless you. And I want to welcome my wonderful friend here. Uh, he's been my, she's been my friend for how many years now? 24 years. Yeah. Yeah, 24 years of friendship. Can you believe? I should be tired by now, shouldn't I? <laughs> 24 years of being a friend to this woman. Pastor Sally. Uh, you're welcome to Thank the you. broadcast today. How are you? I'm doing I know you are tired. Thing. You've done so much. She was dragging herself. Saying, oh, I'm tired. I said, oh, don't worry. We'll just do a little and then we go. You know, so we bless God. It's good to have you. Uh, what have you got to tell our brothers and sisters? Out Hello, there? brothers and sisters. It's always a pleasure to come here, even though I feel really tired today. But I trust God that it's going to be a good time. God bless you, Sister Sefa. God bless you, Dick and Tom. God bless you, Pastor Emmanuel, Sister Emilia. It's also very nice um, having you to listen to us. We love you too, and God bless you. And everybody who has joined us, you are warmly welcome. And let's enjoy the presence of God today. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. So let's pray and then let's start. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your goodness and your mercies. As we go out to your children out there, we pray that you give us utterance. Help us not to say anything out of human wisdom. Let us not say anything that will bring people down, or destroy people. But let's say things that will be a blessing, that will build them up, that will lift them up, that will draw them closer, that will empower them and strengthen them so they can accomplish great things in their marriages and in their lives in general. Have your way, sweet Holy Spirit. Let everybody be blessed. If somebody is not saved, let them be saved. If there's anybody sick, let them be healed. If there's anybody going through a difficulty, let them get a miracle. Let them get a solution, even through this broadcast. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Right. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, Ronnie. Hello, Liz. Uh, hello, everybody. If we miss your name or your comment, it's not intentional, please. The thing keeps rolling. Okay, so God bless you. Right, so we've been looking at jealousy, dealing with jealousy in marriage. <laughs> dealing with jealousy in marriage uh, almost everybody has felt jealous at one point or the other in their marriages with the exception of uh <laughs> everybody has felt jealous at one point or the other right and if jealousy is not 
handled effectively, it can lead to a lot of bless you, brother Alphonse. Bless you, bless bless you, Betty. Bless you, Amelia. Right? If jealousy if is not handled properly. It can lead to a whole lot of things. As we go on, you will see. People have committed murder because of jealousy. People have committed suicide because of jealousy. People have killed their own children to spy their spouse because they were jealous about them. Okay. Recently... Sorry, can I, can I just acknowledge um, Blessing Jackson says, Hello, my first time here. God bless you for joining us. We trust God that you have a good time with us. Amen. Right, okay. Uh, ble uh, blessing. God bless you. Right, so... Uh, 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 recently it was on the news that somebody actually uh, uh, killed his own daughter a daughter that he has with his wife the wife had left him and was now going out with somebody else so in his anger they i mean I, I think it was part of the arrangement in the separation that the daughter will spend some time with the father and then spend some time with the mother during sometimes in the week so when the the man had this daughter what he did was that he had planned on that day to kill the woman and possibly kill the daughter as well but when the woman came in to collect the daughter and found out that the man was armed she ran out and the man took his own daughter and killed her just because of jealousy that the wife is going out with somebody else so it's a very very important thing we really have to learn how to deal with it maybe it hasn't reached you yet you haven't felt jealous in your in your marriage yet and you feel everything is okay but you've got to learn some of these things and put them in your arsenal so that when the spirit of jealousy visits your home you will have enough resources to fight back because it's a demon it is a spirit it is that same spirit that entered Saul when david when david what's happening there when david uh uh, uh 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 killed goliath and the woman started singing david has killed his ten thousand saul has killed his thousand saul got jealous and for a whole lot of time saul was looking for an opportunity to kill david that is what jealousy is it is a spirit it is a demon saul did not recover from that thing until he died dead jealousy so we've got to learn how to rise above it how not to allow jealousy to destroy us in our marriages and if you haven't shared it please share it or invite friends invite loved ones to come on board and let us uh, get going so pastor Sally, what is jealousy I think we said um, jealousy is a strong negative feeling mm. or bitterness towards mm. um, the well-being or happiness of another person. Mm. Usually because they are, they seem to be doing well, doing better, better or enjoying yeah. something, something more, more than, than you. Yeah. Or especially in the context of marriage, when they are taking that which belongs to you, to, 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 to another person or to another place, their attention, their care the various things that must be directed towards you if they are directed elsewhere it can really make you feel jealous and feel very very bitter and uh, we said what are some of the things that cause jealousy competition competition so when you're yeah. in the marriage and uh, you don't team. understand that the two of you are supposed to work, work as together. a team yeah. but then you you end up uh, feeling that you have to uh, do better you have to outdo the other person then jealousy can come in what else we also talked about selfishness. Yeah. When you're only thinking about yourself, it's very likely you will be jealous. You'll be jealous if you're only thinking about yourself or you will cause jealousy if you're only thinking about yourself. So selfishness either makes you jealous or you make your other, it makes your, your other half jealous. Selfishness is a major thing when you're only thinking of what is good for you and not us. Mm. When you think what I like and not us. So for example... Uh, uh, you have seen a woman out there as a man in a marriage, right? And uh, you are excited about this woman. Her curves, her color, her voice, whatever it is, her hair is attracting you so much that you are thinking of the fact, if I get this woman, I will be so happy because she's so beautiful to me. But you are not thinking that if I get this woman, how will my wife feel if I get this woman? So if you are selfish and you're only thinking about yourself, what will make you happy, then you will create jealousy in your wife okay what are this mommy we also talked about pride when you have uh, you feel that you are better than your spouse yeah or you feel that you are better at doing something than your spouse yeah so pride you are full of pride yeah pride neglect as well 
Yeah. When when a spouse feels neglected, when there is no self confidence, somebody yeah. has put it here, Emilia. Emilia there's insecurity. insecurity. Yes. So when you don't feel secure in yourself, when you don't have self confidence, and your your confidence only comes from the the uh, affirmation of other people, then when 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 your spouse is doing well or is focusing on any other thing, low self esteem, you begin to uh, misbehave because you don't have enough. Uh, self-esteem and then also fear we talked about fear as well and then we said what what are the forms that envy take and uh, 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 jealousy. Uh, jealousy takes you you tend to be envious of your spouse yeah there. so like you try to take the credit of for something they have done mm. you wish it was yours yeah. you just try to put yourself in if it wasn't for me i did this but i did that's why are you praising me and not me yeah. that that kind of thing and then covetousness resentment protectiveness is then i'll not let you go i'll not let you do this let me check your phone let me do this let me do that you become a, an investigator suspicion unnecessary suspicion you are always uh, 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 lurking around to see what they are saying to see what they are doing you become distrustful and then sometimes you end up with self-pity yeah. but today i want us to continue and i'm asking you do we have instances where it is okay to be jealous where you are right to be jealous i think so i think there are instances where it is it is okay to be jealous even god says that he's a jealous god oh yeah yeah god says that he's a jealous god so... and what what at what causes god's jealousy <laughs> when you have the right to be jealous so let's say um when certain things take your place hello lady pastor victoria it's good to see you god bless you <laughs> when when certain things take your spouse's attention mm -hmm. and i maybe i want us to take our time and break it down okay so number one mm -hmm. thing that i'll talk about which is very ongoing these days is mm. social media yeah so when social media takes your spouse's time every time instead of you so mm -hmm. the time he has to spend with you mm -hmm. he's spending it chatting to other people on social media mm -hmm. watching all kinds of crazy videos on social media mm -hmm. Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, any of the social media mm. platforms we have. Mm. So in that case, I think you 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 have the right to be jealous because your spouse is not married to any of the social media platforms. Your spouse is married to you. And you see, your spouse is married to you, but on social media, unconsciously, your spouse could be married to 20 other women out there. Yes. Where that is is obsessed with. Yes. That mm -hmm. every day he has to log on to their profile and go and look at their photos. Yeah. And um, um, this woman is beautiful. And your husband or your your, your husband, most of the time is men who do this, mm -hmm. is lasting after this woman on social media that you don't even know. And so that the, your husband doesn't even know the person. Yeah. And yeah, it's lasting up. Oh, she's so beautiful. Oh, she's so nice. And then your own wife, yeah. who is with you, you are not seeing are anything. Not, yeah. So if you're a wife and you see your husband, is always lurking around other women uh, uh, hanging around other women on social media mm -hmm. you have every reason to, to be jealous. jealous yes and on the other hand mm. it may not just be a man lasting after a woman mm -hmm. it could also be the woman yeah there are women to do it it yeah. could also be the woman constantly chatting to a particular man not mm. even looking at his pictures or whatever but craving attention from another man on this on this any of these social media why platforms. would a wife crave attention from another man on social media could it be that she's not getting that much attention at home in the marriage it's possible it's possible she's not getting that much attention at home it's also possible she's that kind of person hey, you know there are some women they are they are their husbands who give them everything there's a scripture that says that there's the, 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 the strange woman her feet does not her stay feet at does home not stay at home so it could be that her husband but that is she not has to say, everything there's a husband who wants to give her everything but she, but she still, still wants more yeah that is not to say that it is okay Hello, brother Isaac. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. I hope you are okay. That is not to say that if your mm -hmm. husband is not giving you attention, yeah. go on social media and mm -hmm. start craving attention from mm -hmm. men. No. But we are talking about things that um, take your, your spouse's attention. Mm -hmm. That gives you the right to be jealous. Yeah. So number one, social media, mm -hmm. which is linked to mobile phones. Mm -hmm. Social media on our mobile phones or even just chatting, mm -hmm. chatting to friends, chatting to colleagues, chatting to family. There are some chatting spouses, to ex. chatting to exes. You, you know that there are some married, uh, there's a married man or woman 
who is also still in so much touch with their ex. Yeah. We, we talked extensively about staying away from your ex last week. Mm. So I hope that we, we wouldn't have to go back into mm. that again. Mm. So when you have things like phones, mm -hmm. chatting to your, sometimes colleagues at work, yeah. sometimes friends, sometimes neighbors. Mm -hmm. So social media is taking your spouse away. Mobile phones taking your spouse away. Friends, mm -hmm. it may not be your mobile phone, it may not be social media or social media platforms, it may be friends literally always in your house pulling your spouse to yeah. one place or the so other. So when your husband is at home, he doesn't have time for you because no. friends have come. They've come to watch a match. They've come to discuss this. Yeah. They've come to do this. Yeah. And then sometimes they are doing this here. Let's go. You are at home with your husband. Or you see that he's, he's dressed right. up. He's, he's dressed he's up. Where are you going? Oh, his friend has called that he should go and escort him somewhere. And then he's going. And as a wife, if you are home and your husband is always running around like that, then you have every right to be jealous, right? Yeah. Uh, yes, Agnes, God bless you. God bless you. So you have every right to be jealous. And sometimes husbands too have every right to be jealous mm -hmm. when their, their wives are... Some wives are also like that. Yeah, they have friends coming... Moving from place to place, from going out... From one party to the other, from one program to the other. Every time there's... there's or, or sometimes it's family gathering, extended family gathering. Yes, some people are so involved yeah. in their... Mm -hmm. You are here, Hello, my... Mrs. Aqua. Good my keto, keto, uh, 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 commander. <laughs> right, okay. So, so, you... That point is very, very important. Yeah. Family members. Some people are so much into their family mm -hmm. that... It's they like... Are you, extended family. Their extended family. That you are left out. Yeah, and especially they are so close to brothers, sisters, uncles, aunties, and you feel like a stranger yeah. in his life or in her life. Especially, even though you are especially the husband if or wife. you don't, if you don't even speak their language. Oh, and tell me about it. <laughs> tell me about it. I've been and there. And they are always coming around. <laughs> I've been and there. Talking in their language, and I mean, there's nothing wrong with your extended family mm. coming around to see you. Are you going to see them? Mm. But it becomes an issue, and mm. your your spouse is likely to be jealous mm. when one you don't speak the language that they speak, and mm. they are constantly in the house, yeah. or you are constantly with them. Mm. They'll feel neglected. Yeah. Your spouse will feel neglected, and they they could, I mean, develop a strong feeling of jealousy <laughs> and hatred for your family and hatred for your family so next time so your father is coming no i don't no, want no, them i don't want any any of these okay right very very important how about church can check church also yes. take your spouse's attention to an extent that you feel neglected yes church can easily do that so especially when there's one program after the other so mm. monday there's bible study tuesday there's prayer meeting wednesday there's women's fellowship thursday there's, there's choir, deliverance friday there's deliverance saturday there's evangelism and sunday there's a main service mm -hmm. so almost every day of your week you have something to do at church mm -hmm. and you leave your spouse behind mm -hmm. church is important but mm -hmm. family is also very important mm -hmm. family is also very important so we need to check that as and well and have a balance and have a balance even the bible talks about an unbalanced scale so yeah it's important so an unbalanced life blessings 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 uh tafadzwa woman of god god bless you right so so even with our church life We've got to make sure that we have a balance. Yeah. You can't go to church seven days a week. No. At least. So what's the maximum that people should... Maximum number of days people should commit to? Three days? Four I, days? I, I really can't say three or four. I can't say. It depends on the church. It depends on the, the couple and whatever mm. they are. Yeah, but that is also not to say that neglect. Don't go to church because you are spending time with your spouse. Because the Bible says we shouldn't give up the habit of meeting yeah. together. Yeah, okay. Okay, but what if your spouse is actually a pastor? Or it's a leader who just cannot avoid. Well, if you're, it doesn't mean they should. Okay, let me ask you. As a pastor's wife, do you sometimes feel? Wait, let me say hello to. Let me say hello to Mama Louisa. <laughs> hello, Mama Louisa. God bless hello, you. Hello, Mama Louisa. Maybe she can help us answer this. Question. So you being a pastor's wife, as a pastor's wife, mm -hmm. do you sometimes feel jealous that I am giving so much time, let's say, to ministry, to maybe reading, praying, listening, and preparation that I I don't have enough time for you. Mm, to be very honest, not really. Okay, but maybe not really. because of how I maybe I try yeah, to balance Yeah, not really things. because um, almost everything you are, apart from your personal Bible study and prayer life, almost whatever you're doing in, in terms of ministry, I'm doing it with you. Okay. So I don't feel left out or I don't feel neglected. What I sometimes feel is tiredness. Okay, you feel, you feel tired? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. All right. I, I like the way you run the weekly church. 
Awesome, awesome. So these things can take our 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 attention. No, and, and, and I have not okay, yet. you've not finished. Um, so Carry I, on. Talk, I talked about friends. I talked about social, social media. media. I talked about church, phones, church, phones. extended family, mm -hmm. TV, television. Okay, TV, TV where you are always on the team so let's mm -hmm. say you come back from work mm -hmm. instead of spending a little time with your or just some time with your spouse mm -hmm. you are on the tv constantly mm -hmm. some people love movies mm -hmm. they just love movies so yeah. they are watching movies 24 or 7 news. or news or games documentaries oh yeah or games every day you're on the tv playing one game or the other and all some people also get i mean they cause their spouse to be jealous because of their interests mm -hmm. sports you are very, very interested in sports. So you are very, very interested in something. Yes, because I, I've heard a few stories where people's personal interests have literally led to the demise of, of their marriage. Right. Okay, can I just, sorry, can I just read this? So, Emilia is saying, jealousy itself is not a bad thing mm -hmm. if it's in moderation. Mm -hmm. It shows your spouse really cares about you. Mm -hmm. But it becomes a problem when it is extreme. Mm -hmm. The main problem about jealousy is not knowing how to draw the line. Too much of everything is bad, as we all know. And then Lady Pastor Victoria said, it depends on, so the pastor question. Okay. It depends on how useful they make use of their time when they are at home. Mm -hmm. If you're a minister who spends a lot of time at church, make sure at home that there's a family time no matter what. Mm -hmm. And... Uncle Audrey saying hallelujah, nine glorious years of friendship on Facebook. <laughs> yes. Amen. All right, okay. Okay. So so uh 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 um what was I saying before you read these things? I don't remember. <laughs> Right. Sports. I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was saying that people's personal interests yeah. have sometimes led even to the destruction of their marriage. Yeah. But let's say you you are into so much into fitness and you don't bring your wife along. Yeah. You like your your golf or football or something. You don't bring your your wife along. It will affect the marriage. Pastor, in let the me end. ask you a question. Okay. So, so you're talking about an interest and you're bringing your spouse along. Mm. What if your spouse is genuinely not interested in what you are interested in? So let's say you are interested in sports. Mm -hmm. You are so much into football. Mm -hmm. You are willing. You go to stadiums. You have mm -hmm. Sky Sports and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But your spouse is just not interested in it. What do you do? I think that you have to find a common ground. Mm -hmm. You look for what she's also interested in, and then possibly let her do that at the time that you are doing what you like, so that she doesn't feel left out. Right. Then when you both finish, you come together. Okay. If it's something you cannot give up, mm -hmm. and you is, don't is want there, it to affect your marriage. Is there something that you love so much you are not willing to give it up for the sake of the family? Uh, it depends on how important it is. Mm. Let's say if you are into fitness. Uh, fitness is good. Exercise is good. Yeah. right? But if it's just following football, mm. uh, once you marry, you should be matured enough to be able to drop that one so that you can make time for your family. Right. So it's not all... Uh, 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 um, what do you call those things? Uh, 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 what things? The things you do, not your main thing, but you do as a, an, a hobby. hobby. It's not all. <laughs> it's not all hobbies that you should hold on to. Some hobbies you can easily drop, mm -hmm. no matter how you like them, for the sake of your family. Yeah. Some ho hobbies you should drop. The ones that you cannot drop, try and get your wife to be, get interested. If she yeah. cannot get interested, then get, let her also find what she's interested in mm -hmm. and then program your times so that whilst you are busy doing this, she can also be busy doing what she likes doing yeah. so that you don't feel or she doesn't feel left out. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Have you finished with those ones? Yeah, I think so. These are the things that I think that when, you're, when they are taking your spouse's attention, mm. you have every right to feel jealous mm. as a spouse. Okay. Because... You're spending time with your friends. What about me? You are mm. not married to your friends. You're married to me. Mm. You're spending so much. I, I personally do not like the way social media is affecting families in a negative yeah, way. Yeah, these days social in media In a negative is, yeah. way. I mean, people's marriages are breaking because they have found an ex on social yeah, media. Yeah, their primary school girlfriend. Yeah, or maybe not even, it may not even be an ex. Or they are meeting, they met new somebody. People. It could be new people. It could be old people. Old flames are rekindled and all those things because of all these social media. And it, even... When you meet people, you meet somebody on the bus stop, you meet somebody at church first time, all you have to do is just exchange numbers. And before you realize, you are communicating. You are connected. Yeah. You can go look out for their name on, on social media, look for all the information about them, and then 
quickly connect. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people are experiencing lies, mm -hmm. bitterness, unforgiveness yeah. because of social media. I mean, you tell your spouse, oh. Um, I'm going somewhere, I'm going to for a meeting or something. You are meeting somebody you met on social media. People's life have been destroyed because of social... In fact, people have died because of social media. Mm. So we, we really need to be careful that... It has, Hello, Bishop Samuel of me. It's good to see you. God bless you. And bless everybody you. who just were first yeah. lady, I have seen you as well. God bless you for joining. Sister Makaiva, I've seen you. God bless you. Sister Mandy... Sister Ma, me, God bless you all for coming. Right. Please share the video if you haven't done so already. Yeah, yeah. Greetings, uh, greetings, first lady. <laughs> greetings, first lady. God bless you. Okay, right. So, uh, 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 apart from these things that are not so important, mm -hmm. how about when your spouse is being unfaithful? Does that give you a legitimate reason to be jealous? Yes, yes, yes. If yes. You, you can literally, you know that your wife is... is Seeing another man or your husband is seeing another woman. Hello, Sister Hetty. Good to see you. Welcome. It's been a while. I hope you are okay. Yes, when your spouse is being unfaithful, mm -hmm. it's also it's 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 a main reason why you should be jealous. Mm -hmm. So you are in a marriage and mm -hmm. your spouse is seeing somebody else or mm -hmm. giving their love to somebody else or mm -hmm. cheating on you. Mm -hmm. You have every right to be jealous. Mm. Every single right to be jealous. Why? Why do you think that people feel so jealous? Good afternoon, Mommy Juliana. Why, Hello, Mama Julie. Why do you think people feel so jealous when their husband or their wife is getting involved with another person? That's a day. Right. So oh, let's, let's go into it. Why? <laughs> because... I mean, why? Why does it happen like because that? Because in your marriage vows, you said it's going to be that man or that woman only. You are going to give your love, your time, your attention, your body, your very life to that person. But sharing is caring. That's fine. I'm, please, can anybody come and share? <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Dari says sharing is caring. <laughs> sharing is caring. No, no, seriously. We, let's try and get into, into, into this. Because sometimes, sometimes your husband or your wife may be involved with somebody, but not as you are seeing, not as you are thinking. Right. Pastor, sometimes Pastor, Pastor, sometimes there's please. nothing really going on. If there's nothing really good, there are things you do mm -hmm. that will show that there's nothing really going on. Mm -hmm. And there are things you do that will show that there's something going on. Mm -hmm. And there are what we call appearances of evil. Mm -hmm. there, may be nothing, there may be nothing going on, but mm -hmm. the way you are going about it mm -hmm. will make your spouse suspect that there's something going on. And sometimes there's nothing going on, but the way it is going, eventually something will go on. Yes. Because a man shall not keep fire in his bosom and not be burnt. And, not be burnt. and a, man a man shall, shall not go on, on coals, coals and, and his feet, feet not be burnt. <laughs> so sometimes you see the way it's going. Nothing is going on now. But you can see that if you don't care a bit, it will lead to more dangerous uh, things. Uh, 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 Things okay. happening. I think I want to read a few comments okay. here. Um, Mandy is saying nice topic and great words of wisdom. Mm. And then uh, Mama Juliana is saying, Hey, hey your daughter said more. This topic, um, Nav Mav is saying this topic is deep. Thanks so much. Mrs. Aqua says some spouses don't even have hobbies. They rely on their on other spouses for their happiness. <laughs> so much that when he's watching football, you are left out. Yeah. Discover something to occupy yourself and then arrange few times of quality time yeah sister tafa is saying because the affection that is due you is being given to someone else yes uh -huh. and actually will speak louder than words as mama julie is saying sister francis is saying that's right and um, Mama is saying because sometime what the husband would do for the other person she has she has never or will never do you. it for you as a wife and definitely you'll be jealous if that, that is, is the very case, very true that is very true um, mm. Mama, that mm. sometimes um a, a third party will be doing something for your spouse that may be the man or, or the your man, spouse will be doing something for a third, a third party, party and they that have he's never, not doing for you but I, I, that's a very serious thing i i personally think don't, don't do anything for a third party that you have not or cannot do for yourself no no that it's mommy that is not even up to it don't do anything mm -hmm. for a third party the same way you are even doing for your for wife, your wife yeah. i think that your wife i have a personal principle that my wife on is on a Certain pedestal really? that, of course, <laughs> <laughs> my wife is on a certain pedestal that there are things I'll do for my wife, I'll not do for any woman, mm. no matter 
how I like you, no matter what you need. There are things I do for my wife. There are conversations I have with my wife. So, men, I think we have to understand some of these things. There are some words I use with my wife. I won't use with any other woman, no matter what. There are some games I play with my wife. I will not play with any other woman, no matter what. Whether I, I love you or I don't love you, I will not play those games with you. There are some quality times I will not spend with you that I spend with my wife. There are some things I will buy for my wife that I will not buy for any woman. And I think that we must, we must, we must put some of these things as real stone, what do you call them? Pillars. Pillars. They said these ones cannot be moved. These are landmarks that cannot be moved. Because you see, most of the times, people have eventually ended up in adultery mm -hmm. because they started this casual friendship with another woman, mm -hmm. for example, right? And they were playing with that woman more than they were playing with their wife. Yeah. And then the wife got jealous. Why you you play with this? Oh, there's nothing, there's nothing. But obviously, you are playing more with this one than you play with your own wife. So your wife keeps nagging and nagging. Then she rather the more she nags, the more ugly she looks, the more wicked she looks, the more terrible she looks. And then rather you rather name her evil and move on to the other woman. Do you know? I think one of the reasons why we find ourselves in this situation is that mm -hmm. number one, we do not value the the vows yeah. we make to each other. Yeah. You see, one of your your vow is that. You will esteem your spouse above, above every, every other person. So please let us learn this. So, These are some of the things that trigger jealousy. Yeah. Right? We haven't reached there, but we, we are. Yeah, but we are, yeah. we are on. You said you will esteem because out of the whatever million of millions of women you saw or mm -hmm. men you saw, you chose this one mm -hmm. to spend the rest of your life with him or her. Mm -hmm. So you are valuing her more than any other person, mm -hmm. him or her. You That's what you from Recently, I nearly put on Facebook, do men. I, I haven't looked at the women's side, but I was going to ask that, do men actually take seriously the vows that we make on our wedding days? But, do, but we, do we really mean it? Do not, we understand it? I wouldn't say it's just, I think it's both men and women, because some of us are excited about the wedding. And we forget about the marriage itself. But the vows that we make mm -hmm. on our wedding day are mm -hmm. not for the wedding. The vows they are, are for, for the marriage. Life. Yes. The, the vows we say but, are not for the wedding. Oh, they are for God, the, for God, the God. marriage that we are going into. But you see, people, we just learn how to recite it. And then we don't we, we rehearse about it, it. How we can say it on the judgment day. And after, on the judgment day. <laughs> on the, you should tell you I'm tired. On the wedding day, yeah. we revise, we revise our how to say it. The judgment day. <laughs> 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 we re we rehearse how to say this thing on the wedding day just for the wedding day yeah. forgetting that these are vows for life yeah that i will do you remember the vows um i remember some okay say it let me um i take thee as my wedded wife uh -huh. to love and to hold mm -hmm. please help me if you remember some of the wedding vows <laughs> to love and to hold to to in uh, sickness and in health. Something, something in sickness and in health. Yeah, I'm trying to look for one of my... <laughs> Till death do us part. Yeah. In sickness to, and in... To give you my... To give... To give you my something, something. Yeah. To give you my life or my all or whatever. Yeah. Till weddings. death do us part. Yeah. Oh, yeah, weddings. Yeah, we you carry on. Let me, let me find this. So I think the woman has hers, the, the bride has hers, and the mm -hmm. groom has his as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Please, if you are, if you remember, yeah, to cherish. Okay. If you remember so, some of the vows, no, bring it so no, that we can I have talk it here. about it. Right. The groom facing the bride, holding her right hand. The man will say, right hand. say his vows either from memory or by following the minister mm -hmm. phrase by phrase. Mm -hmm. I. I. Mention your name. I, Derek. I, Greg <laughs> Solomon. Uh, uh, I, Derek. Um, mm -hmm. Take you, Selgelia, mm -hmm. to be my wife. Mm -hmm. To love you with all my heart's affection. Uh -huh. You see, to love you with all my heart's affection. Mm -hmm. So if your wife is not feeling all of your, your heart's, heart's affection, affection then... and if your wife is feeling that some of the affection is going to somebody else, then it, it becomes like then they have the right because you promise them that you give them all. That is why they, they have every right to be jealous. You promise them that you give them all. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, before you continue, I was going to... Jimama is saying... Pastor, why don't we write or recite our own vows than to let pastors stay for us repeat? I was going to say that, honestly. Some do, some do. I was going to say that I think it would be good if you write your own vows 
and you say it to your spouse so that we can hold you accountable for it. These are the things you said you would do for your spouse in the marriage. Some so do, should, actually. Some I, do. I, I personally think that should be, because you could say that, well, somebody can argue that the pastor said it and I followed him. That yeah, but not, you, you, if you, you, you were asked, if you agree, say these things after me. <laughs> so you agree. So he said, I will give you all of my heart's affection to endow you with all my earthly possessions. So let, let's break this. The reason why when your wife or your husband gets jealous, sometimes they have a right to get jealous, right? Mm -hmm. You have promised, number one, that I will take you as my wife. Wife means I'm my lifelong companion, yeah. okay? And I will love you with all of my heart's affection. So my heart will not drift after anybody or anything more than it is following you. Mm -hmm. So if at any point you sense that my heart is going elsewhere, then you have every right, every reason to feel offended, okay? Mm -hmm. To love you with all of my heart's affection. To endow you with all my earthly possessions. Mm -hmm. So if I, should, if I have to endow you with all my earthly possessions, mm -hmm. you need this, you are not getting. You need that, you are not getting. And somebody you, else is You getting. see that if I, I am not sending getting, money. If I'm not getting because you don't have it, that's fine. But if I'm not getting it because somebody else is getting or something else is getting it, then it becomes like No, issue. mommy, this is serious. To to endow you with all my earthly possessions. Mm -hmm. That means that your wife comes above your 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 extended family. Mm -hmm. Your mother, your father, your sisters, your brothers. Of course, your mother, your father, you must take good care of them. Your sisters, your brothers, your friends, all those things. Your money belongs to your wife first. Mm -hmm. Your, your your resources, your house, your car, your lands, everything belongs to your wife first. Mm -hmm. Then if the two of you agree, then you pass some to your extended families. Mm -hmm. Right? But we have in many marriages these days, where men and women are siphoning money that is supposed to be for the, the benefit of their, their partner spouse. to yeah. their sisters, yeah. brothers, yeah. uncles. Outside and the wife doesn't even know. There are wives who do not know how much their husbands are even earning. No. They can't see their pay slip. They don't see anything. Every time you ask your husband for anything, there's no money. I don't have money. There's no money. I don't have money. There's no money. So if you are living like this, when you have gone to say that you will give your wife all of your earthly possessions, mm -hmm. then you she has every like reason to, be jealous because you are to feel to jealous. Your spouse. And you know what? There, there's one more that we that probably is not here or is in the other one. Wait, that says okay. That no. says forsaking all others. Yes. Forsaking all others. Yeah, that is on on, on the other one. On the other one. The, okay. To give you all the honor of my name. To really? give you all the honor of my name, and to share with you the grace of my God. Hmm. You, you, you see? Yeah. So, if you are not doing this, then you are very, very likely to, to create, to create a, a jealousy mm -hmm. in your wife. When your attention and your is wealth going is going else. elsewhere. Okay? Elsewhere. You want, you want the other one? Yeah, I want to say the one that says... Okay, maybe it I cannot... Be here. Yeah, right. So there's one that says you love him, you comfort him in sickness. Yeah. Okay, that's where it says for the groom. Okay, there's another one here. There's another one here. It says, you ask the groom, will you have this woman to be your wedded wife, to live together after God's ordinance mm -hmm. in the holy estate of matrimony? Mm -hmm. Will you love her, comfort her, honor her, keep her in sickness and in health forsaking others you see we have instances i have yeah. heard some recently where a husband has filed for divorce for his wife because the wife is sick oh how oh yeah yeah, I mean, yeah. Hmm. a husband has filed for divorce for his wife because the wife is sick hmm. okay so forsake is i will keep you i will love you i will comfort you i will honor you mm -hmm. even when your behavior is not looking attractive enough i will still honor you okay mm -hmm. when you don't look honorable enough yeah. i will still honor you because you are the one i have chosen yeah. and i will forsake all others whether you are sick or you are healthy i'm still going to stick with you mm -hmm. right no matter what happens forsaking all others i will keep only onto you i will keep you only or and keep the only onto her so long as you both shall live yeah 
So these are the reasons why we have every right to get jealous when we are going against this. Okay, I have a few comments to read here. So the marriage vows are very, very strong. Yeah. But if we really mean them, then we will not create unnecessary jealousy. If we follow these, yeah. your spouse will not easily feel that jealous. I think, okay, go on. Uh, yeah, there are a few issues going on here. Let's try and solve them okay. if we can. I think somebody, I'm not sure whether it's Sami said that mm. um, we don't write our vows because when I said I think we should, because mm. we, are we Africans don't know how to write it or not. Mm. And then um, people are saying, uh, but Isaac is saying we Africans can, can write, we can because he wrote his. I think that yeah, of course we can write our vows if we if we want to. Mm. I don't really think that we don't know how to write. We, no, we know how to write. We know write. how to we write. We, speak, we speak English. We mm. are educated, so we mm. can write our own. We can write mm. our own vows. And, and a lot of people write their own vows. Yeah. I've seen. I've seen Basti, people write. Basti is also saying communication is major in marriage. Mm -hmm. Intimacy is vital, warmth and care, mm. and all that. Okay. All right. So when these things are missing, then you are very very likely to, to feel jealous. But what about the woman? Because this is, we're yeah, only saying is, it. Oh, right. I, I remember some of the, the, the bride's vow. It says mm -hmm. that I will submit to you. I will mm -hmm. cherish you. I will honor you. Mm -hmm. I will, and here is the case. Sometimes as a husband, you find that your wife is honoring another man more than she's honoring you. Mm -hmm. As a husband, it will cause jealousy. It, it will cause you to be jealous. Mm -hmm. Your wife is sort of respecting another man more than some wives are amazing you know they mm -hmm. respect their mm -hmm. pastors mm -hmm. they don't talk to their pastors in any way they mm -hmm. don't talk to their i mean in, in any rude way they don't talk to their bosses mm -hmm. in any rude way but come and see the way they talk to their husbands mm -hmm. and so if your husband sees that you are honoring another man mm -hmm. and respecting another man better or mm -hmm. more than you are doing to him mm -hmm. he's bound to be jealous right and then with the wife mm -hmm. it says uh uh before god and these witnesses will you Says Algeria, yeah. uh, take Derek yeah. to be your husband. Will you love and comfort him? Will you honor him and obey him? So one thing also that causes jealousy in the hearts of husbands mm -hmm. is when their wives do not obey them. Yeah. When their wives do not obey, it causes jealousy. Will you obey him? Will you keep him in joy, in sorrow, and preserve him with this bond mm -hmm. in holy, unbroken uh, 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 until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, as long as you both shall live. And you know the answer we give to all this. Mm -hmm. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Yes, that, I will. That's a, that's a then response. Immediately we go home. We, we throw. We throw everything away. You know what, Pastor? How about how beautiful will it be to actually write your marriage vows and frame it and stick it in your yeah, room somewhere? Yeah, I think that I think that is a good idea. Yes, yeah, stick your marriage vows in your living room or bed or whatever. So that you always remember it. The Bible says in Habakkuk 2, mm -hmm. write it down. Write the vision down. So that down. he may run the reader. Yes. Yeah, so once it is written down and you see it, I mean, you can write it down and write it in your book and close somewhere. No, you but can frame it. Written, yeah, frame your... You can frame it. Guess I think... what? We frame our wedding pictures. Yes. But we don't frame, we don't our, frame, frame the our vows. vows. The vows that are supposed to keep because the marriage. Because the pictures don't make the marriage. It's no, the, the vows, vows that, that make, make the, the marriage. marriage. They're not the pictures. And we frame the wedding pictures. We look at the wedding pictures every time. And we never frame the vows. We don't frame the vows. Wow. Wow. So that is a very, very powerful idea. I think I'm going to do that. And maybe that's going to be a homework for all of us as well. Ah. Let us go. If you remember the vows you used. Or if you want to choose another vow. Write your vow. Type it nicely. Print it out. Put it in a frame. Hang it on your wall. Okay. You don't need to force your husband or your wife to do it. You, the husband listening to me. <laughs> you, the wife listening to me. Who want to be a faithful husband or a faithful wife to your, 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 your spouse. Just do it. Just do it. Don't look at what your, your spouse is going to do. Print your vow nicely. Decorate it. Put it in a frame. Hang it on your wall, in your bedroom or in your living room, wherever. So that every time you see it, you can remind yourself that this is the promise I have made towards this woman and you remind yourself may god help me to be faithful to it i have promised never to abandon this woman i have promised that if she is sick i'm going to stand with her and help her i've promised that when her behavior is excellent i will love her but when her behavior is also not good enough i will not abandon her i have promised that if i meet another woman and of course you will who looks more beautiful than her who looks more kind than her who looks more intelligent than her who looks more 
more attractive than her, whatever, I am still going to come back to this same old woman and love her, hold her, and cherish her. I think we should do that. Pastor, we must very... write our vows and hang them. The vows are more important than the okay. photos. Yes. I have, a, I have a very pressing question from somebody. She's, Please she's ask. actually asked it twice. Okay, And ask Nana Adra Florence is saying, what makes wives not obey their husbands? Why? We will that's come to that. Answer. So we will come to why okay, so wives are not... Is this the question or there's yeah, another that's, one? that's the question. <laughs> the question is... What makes wife? She, she has asked it twice. So okay. I think she's really interested in... Right, going. Nana. What makes wives not obey their husbands? Number one... When the heart of the wife is hardened, you see, when your heart is hardened, your heart is carnal, you only weigh your husband and you think he doesn't deserve to be obeyed. So you disobey him, right? If you are spiritual, you will obey your husband whether he looks like he deserves it or not. The only thing that makes a husband qualified to be obeyed is that he is your husband. And that the instruction or whatever he's giving you is not contrary to the word of God. If she's telling you something that is opposite the word of God, you have every reason not to obey. Okay? But if it is not contrary to the word of God, you must obey. Now, if you cannot obey, it's because your heart is hardened. And it's in the hardness of your heart. That is why you cannot obey your okay, husband. Pastor, hold on. She okay. said something. She said, mm -hmm. um, for example, you come home and find your husband on top of another woman. Mm -hmm. I I'm coming. That is not the reason why you must not obey him. <laughs> you see, I'm just trying to be blunt here. Our obedience to the scriptures, right, is not conditional. So it's not like if your husband is faithful to you, then you submit to him. Neither is it saying that if your wife obeys you, then you love her. Okay? It's unconditional. However, I must understand that in the natural sense, if your husband is misbehaving, if your husband is being unfaithful, you've come to meet him on top of another woman, you will definitely be angry. You will lose all respect you have for him. But in Christ, you still, you see, you don't, how do I put it? You don't disrespect your husband because he is bad. You disrespect your husband because you are bad. When you are good, no matter what your husband does, it will not change your character. Your character is your character. Your character is what you are. Okay. This woman is, is, is a black woman. Whether we switch on the light or we switch off the light, she is a black woman. That should not change what she is. So the circumstances around you should not change what your character is. But I have seen that naturally, that is what many of us do. Oh, because of this, I've also done this. Because of this, I've also done that. But if you look in the Bible, they went to ask Jesus that what are the reasons why we can divorce our wives? And Jesus said that you cannot divorce your wife. He said because Moses said that we can divorce. And Jesus told them that Moses allowed you to divorce because of the hardness of your heart. But from the beginning, it was not so. So it is the hardness of the heart. That means that from the beginning, when the heart was not hard, even when your spouse misbehaves, you still love her. You still love him. You still appreciate him. I know it's not always going to be easy. I know there is a caveat that if there is adultery, you can divorce. But until you have divorced them, you still have to obey. If you come to meet your husband on top of another woman and you choose not to divorce him, then you have chosen to keep him as your husband. So far as you are keeping him as your husband, you must obey him and love him and cherish him. I mean, we don't have to forget the fact that yes, you will be hurt. Yes, you'll be offended. Maybe yeah. maybe she's trying to talk from that point of view. where The point of pain. Of, yeah, pain or hurt or offense. Exactly. Or Don't like get that. me wrong. Don't think that I'm trying to trivialize the situation. It's not trivial. It's a very, very serious situation. You have every reason to be angry. You have every reason to kickbox him. You have every reason to do any of those things. I'm not trying to trivialize it. You have every reason to be very, very angry. But you have a choice here. Are you going to stay in the marriage? Are you going to walk away? 
if you can be you can have a bigger heart and forgive him and stay in the marriage then you don't destroy the marriage by being rebellious because you caught him sleeping with somebody you caught him sleeping with somebody you will not divorce him and you are going to stay in the marriage and be rebellious you are going to destroy yourself and destroy him so my take is that so far as you have chosen to stay in the marriage be submissive obey your husband so far as you've chosen to stay in the marriage because the only thing that qualifies him for your obedience is that he is a husband if you don't want to obey him don't let him be your husband but don't go around carrying the title of a wife whilst you cannot obey the man because you will be hurting him and hurting yourself eventually and a husband husbands are also likely to seek interest in another woman when they have a wife who is rebellious a wife who is arguing shutting back disobeying being vengeful okay so let us be very careful how we treat our husbands in the same way as husbands do let us be careful how we treat our wives mm -hmm. extremely extremely important extremely important okay Th that is the truth you are obeying him if you're going to stay in the marriage don't stay in the marriage and always be insulting him attacking him hey, hey I call you are this you are that why did you stay if you are staying obey if you don't want to obey leave let him marry the one he, you caught him sleeping with so that if she will obey then fine sometimes these are some of the raw stuff that we have to understand okay but as a wife try your best to obey your husband you try your best to i know you will not always get it right but do your best to obey your husband just as husbands must also do their best to love their wives okay all right okay where were we were talking about, talking about faithfulness like i mean breaking your marriage vows yeah so when you break your marriage vows it, it is it, it can be very very painful yeah you promise to love me now you're loving me and another person or maybe you're, or you're loving, loving somebody me. else you're not loving me at all you're loving somebody else you know the reason why this week i've been putting this kind of uh Challenge, Challenge for husbands. For husbands. Yes. Because, you know, on this journey, I yes. talk, after every broadcast, I talk to a lot of people. People contact you. People call me with their marital situations. And proud to this broadcast, I've been doing it. People are talking to you about their marriages. Many wives feel like widows in their marriages. Mm. Too many wives. They are only carrying the ring and the title. Mm. But they are not feeling the warmth and the love of their husbands. The excitement of their husbands. Mm. And the saddest part of it is that they feel duped. Mm. Because it was not like that from the beginning. Yeah. If the man had behaved right, like that right from the beginning, mm. they would have even chosen not to marry him at all. Mm. But this man came. Every day he's calling. Every day he's all over here. Mm -hmm. Taking her out. Taking her for a stroll. Mm -hmm. Buying her flowers. Doing things for her. Mm -hmm. Doing all these things. And then this woman gives in to the man. He marries her and then all of a sudden he changes into a completely irresponsible, non-responsive, nonchalant, <laughs> I mean, com like completely not in <laughs> something else. Something else. Mm -hmm. And then this woman is left in this cage. She only knows she's married. That's all. But the thing that she thought, oh, you showed this woman these things. And that's why she said, oh, if this is how you're going to treat me, then I'm going to marry you. Yeah. Now she's married you and she's not getting any of this. Mm. She's not getting any of this. No love, no joy, no friendship, no communication, no warmth, no embrace, no help, no support, nothing. nothing. Yeah. And that's why I've been putting that up. And these, those things can also create jealousy. Yeah. Yeah. You're not doing anything. You're not talking. Some husbands hardly sit down to chat with their wives. And yet your wife will catch you on the phone talking to somebody, ba 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 laughing. Mm -hmm. Even if it is another man, your wife will feel jealous. So, me, am I not a human being? Yeah. But go be tied to if it's another woman. Mm -hmm. Then she has every reason to strike. Yeah. Just every reason to many women feel deceived in their marriages. Many women feel deceived. Mm -hmm. That look, marriages will hardly break if husbands would treat their wife the same way they used to treat them when they were going out. Oh yes. Oh yes. Because it looks like um, most of the time the courtship time is more exciting than the marriage itself. Yeah. And we stop doing so many things when we get because you know that you've you've got the man or you've got the woman and that's but I think that courtship or the things we do in courtship should even continue more mm -hmm. in the marriage. You should learn to court your wife 
still in the marriage. Somebody says that uh, 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 love is blind, but marriage is an eye opener. A marriage is an eye opener. <laughs> Pastor, you know, talking about unfaithfulness on the, on the part yeah. of your spouse, yeah. we're not only talking about cheating, mm -hmm. mobile phones. Mm -hmm. So where you send some kind of love messages to another woman, mm -hmm. oh, I miss you. You are telling another woman, I miss you, when you haven't told your wife, I miss you, for how the long? The fact is, mommy, these are, like, like this I was, share, I was telling you earlier, yeah. I miss you, mm -hmm. it's only for my wife. Yeah, there should be boundaries, there should be certain if things. If I am telling another woman about missing what i say is we miss you <laughs> yeah yeah we miss you mm -hmm. so that you know the message is me and somebody else miss yeah. you <laughs> likely my wife but not i i personally will never tell another woman i miss you no or if the woman is married for example i say we miss you both you and your husband we miss you all you, you see yeah. so it must never be that a man it is not right that you would tell another woman you miss her. Unless it's your mother. Eh? Mm -hmm. Unless it's your mother oh, or maybe, maybe your, your sister. Daughter or sister or your daughter. Okay? But apart from this, you cannot tell another woman that you miss her. You No! Sorry, sorry, Lady Pastor Victoria, we haven't started the Bible verses yet. They will come soon. <laughs> no, no, we haven't put in any Bible verse yet. Okay? Right. So, extremely important. That you learn not to not to uh, 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 be unfaithful. Now, unfaithful. Oh, sorry. Wow. She said she has to she has to translate it to a friend who has just joined and doesn't speak English. Wow. That's nice. Right. God okay. Bless you. Okay. Bless. Powerful. Bless. Bless. Right. Okay. So unfaithfulness, unfaithfulness mm -hmm. is a major reason why a spouse will be. Maybe, Pastor. We need to look at some of the things we have to do to avoid unfaithfulness. Because mm -hmm. unfaithfulness could take any other form, Pastor. Mm -hmm. it, it could take different forms. Mm -hmm. It could take actually doing what you cheating on your spouse, mm -hmm. having intimate moments with somebody else. But there are so many things that will lead to that. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at how to avoid the things that will lead to that. Yeah. Going out on dates. Yeah. With Another, Another person who is yeah, not your husband. Who is your not wife. your husband? So let's say, oh, why, why, why don't we go out to and eat this evening? You are a married man. A you woman, are a married woman. You are a married man. Your colleague, a lady, is her birthday. Then you take her out. Mm? Yeah. You take a colleague, a woman, out on her birthday because it's her birthday. Because it's her birthday. And your wife is at home. Yes. If or, she would do that, let your wife join in. Yes. Or you buy gifts. To another woman mm -hmm. on this same bed they think you buy a flower for another woman Pastor, it's a no-no some of the things they buy, they buy whether you buy the same for your wife or not it's a no-no your wife is your wife your wife is your, she belongs to a different class your wife's class cannot be compared to any other woman mm -hmm. okay so that there are things you do for your wife you, you don't, don't do for any other. other woman but do you know mommy some men do this and not because they are evil they are just careless yeah yeah. P Pastor, let's balance it. In the same way as a wife, there are things you do for your husband. There are communication you have with your husband. There are words you use for your husband that you shouldn't use for any other man. And you shouldn't allow any other man to use those words on you. Because sometimes the woman is not using it on another man. But there are men using it on her and she's happy. So you're a married woman. Yeah. And somebody else is telling, another man is telling you, you look sexy. And you are smiling. No, you shouldn't. Then or you, you shouldn't are tapping him. Hey, stop. stop. Don't you know I'm married? No, you slap him and walk out. Or you, you, you actually show him you're angry. Right? So there are some words. As a married woman, somebody else should not be able to tell you you look sexy. And then you also accept it. And you smile. Another man should not be able to tap your bottom. <laughs> married woman. Then another man touches your buttocks. And hell does not break loose. You are complicit. Another man should not be able to hold your breast or touch your breast as a married woman. Hey, they shouldn't be able to come that close. You know, once I was I was talking to a young girl mm -hmm. some time ago. I was talking to a young girl. Mm -hmm. She was walking about mm -hmm. and a boy lifted her skirt mm -hmm. and she laughed. Can you imagine? And she laughed. She said she's a teenager and mm -hmm. she laughed. And I told her, I, I said, This you should never allow any boy to lift your skirt up. 
and then you laugh you should be angry yeah. and warn them mm -hmm. and let them know that you are not that type of girl mm -hmm. because that's how it starts mm -hmm. it starts as teenagers lifting skirts by the time you realize they are unbuttoning your shirt and something else is happening so I just, but some of these people they don't know that is what i'm saying that some husbands do these things just because they are careless they don't know and some wives also do it because they are careless yeah some wives it's like they, they just like to play they take everything for a joke they think oh this one he's been my friend he, 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 he he's just a joker he just likes to play uh, but me, you see it starts with here. playing and then it ends up chaotic let me end something uh, let me say something here mm -hmm. if you are a married man mm -hmm. or a married woman Check what you mean by friends. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like he's just my friend. Mm -hmm. As a married man, your friend should be your husband first. Mm -hmm. Your as a married um, woman, your friend. I mean, as a married, what the other and the other and the opposite is true. Should be your your spouse should be your friend first, mm -hmm. and then you both of you should have friends. Mm -hmm. There should be nothing like he's my friend. A married she's... woman cannot no. have a man as a friend. Neither can a married man have a woman as a friend. You can have collective friends that this is a friend of my wife and I, okay? So we see her together. Right, Pastor um, Francisca is saying going to Christian programs with another unmarried sister or married brother in the church without your spouse. That is also yeah, a no no. That is thing. also a no no. That's it must not no, happen. No. no, if you are going for programs. As much as it is within your power or is it possible, go, go with, with your, your spouse. Go with or your you see, these appearances of evil. They can easily cause problems. And you know this thing, this thing that she's saying, it has ruined many ministers and minister, minister men, minister women's yeah. marriages. Yeah. Gospel musician. Yeah. You are going to sing somewhere. You leave your husband behind. Mm -hmm. You are out there from place to place without your husband. Before you realize, another man has become attracted. Mm -hmm. And then he comes between you. Pastor, you are going to minister 21 somewhere. days convention in the Appalachian, whatever, <laughs> and then you have left your wife behind. But you are going to pray with another sister. And you are there, and other sisters are serving you in your hotel. Sometimes, some even travel with uh, that. She's my personal secretary, my PA. Look, I don't care how many they are. If my wife is not part, nobody's coming. <laughs> I'm going alone. <laughs> Pastor, and, listen, Mike uh -huh. is asking a question. Mm -hmm. So is it appropriate for your wife to have male friends? No, it is not appropriate mm -hmm. for your wife to have male friends. Neither is it appropriate for your husband to have female friends. It is a no-no. A man cannot keep fire in his bosom and his feet not be... And can, a man cannot keep fire in his bosom yeah, and not be bent. Neither can he walk on hot coals and his feet not be bent. As a married man, you must not have women friends. If they want to be your friend, direct them to your wife. If they cannot be friends with your wife, they cannot be your friends. One funny thing, or they, or both, they can be your friend. Both of you can be friends with them. But if it's the opposite, you see, the, the, the sexes must always pair. She is our friend, but she must go closer to my wife than yes. to me. Yes. He is our friend, but he must come closer to me than to my wife. Mm -hmm. Okay? Anybody who wants to be your friend, and doesn't like your wife is suspect yeah i don't I, and i don't understand why even as a spouse you tolerate that so you have a friend who is an opposite sex mm -hmm. and they don't want to be let's say you're a man you have mm -hmm. a female friend mm -hmm. and she cannot she tells you oh me, i can't stand your wife at i can't all. stand your wife i can't stand your wife at all and, or maybe she calls you your wife picks it and she hangs up yeah that'll be the last time you call my husband i'll delete your number immediately you are, <laughs> you are not going to no, call him the, the fact is <laughs> let us be wise a woman wants to be your friend and he tells you, I can't stand your wife. I don't like your wife. That should be a reason. Immediately tell him that you can't be my friend. Advise yourself. A man wants to be your friend. He says your husband, your husband is some way. He doesn't like your husband. Immediately know that he is not the type who can be your friend. Cut him off. He's in to destroy your marriage. Many people think, oh, it's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. Until no, the not, day of the divorce. Yeah, it's not a joke. It's not a joke at all. It's not a joke at all. We are, she is our friend or he is our friend or we are not friends at all. Yeah. Because, listen, almost every friend of mine I have, you know them. I, yeah. You know them. And if you and have a friend and I don't... This, is, this has been my policy. <laughs> Any friend of hers that I don't like, uh, I delete them. You know what? When my colleagues are looking for me, they have my husband's number. Because sometimes I call them with my husband's number. 
so they can call my husband's number and give him a message or I call my husband with their number if I don't have a phone so he knows my friends I also know his friends there's nothing like this is my personal friend I mean it's a married man look a somebody man saying here it's not on somebody saying here my husband never goes out with me can Why? you imagine but I'm, I'm sure he goes out with other people other women it's it's Come a terrible to place to be and you've got to say you've got to give vows that I, you, I, you, I will esteem be with you, you above forever. All I will esteem you above all. Mm -hmm. And yet, you are leaving your wife at home and you are out playing with friends or with other women. It's a no no. Yeah. And we call ourselves Christians. Some of these things must be corrected. Appearances of evil. You may not have any evil intention, but you are hurting your wife and it could lead to something else you are not Mommy, ready for. Forget about even the appearances of evil. The hurt that the your head. wife is going yeah. to Do you know one thing that, that guides my relationship with you? No. How you feel. Mm. You know, I also get tempted, you know. I also Do I also have, <laughs> I also have ideas. Confessions of Pastor Day. <laughs> I also get ideas. But you know, uh, one thing that always guides me, mm. how will she feel? Mm. How will she feel? Something I can imagine you seeing that I've done something and you weeping and crying and saying, No, I can never. I, I can't. I can't. It's wickedness. You see, it's wickedness. So if we are always thinking about how your wife will feel, there are some things you will never do. If they are always thinking about how your husband will feel, there are some things you will never do. Yes. You cannot be laughing with somebody else when you know that it will cause your wife to cry. You can't. Uh, Pastor, there's more. There's more. I mean, there are so many comments. I'll try and read as much as possible. Um, let me see. Let me go back. Okay, so while she's reading, please, if you haven't shared it, I'll be glad if you yeah, can share it. Yeah, please, if you can, or invite a friend to join. Inshiraba yeah. is saying that is a sneaky idea, hidden agenda waiting to unleash. Yeah, and blessing is saying, You see, man is saying, Yes, true. Nana Joy is saying, You see what people are going through in their marriages, and then Francisca is saying, Unmarried sisters from the church always calling your husband late in the night without saying hello to the wife. It is a no no, it is a no no. Go to church and warn them. I'm I am a pastor. I am a pastor and I'm telling you, there is a principle we have instituted in our church now. If anybody is doing something you don't like, go to them and square it out with them. I don't mean go fight them, but tell them, this thing that you are doing, it hurts me. I don't like it. Look, if any sister is calling your husband, even in the day, why should they be calling your husband? Your husband is not the pastor. If your husband is the pastor, they should still call you and discuss their issues, not your husband directly. Right? Because of the dangers involved. So if sisters are harassing your husband, especially at night, please, I'm tomorrow is Sunday, go to church early. <laughs> okay? Don't go late. <laughs> go to church very early before church starts. Meet them and by the door. Warn them all one by one. That if they don't know oh, yeah. and they call your husband again, you will deal with them. <laughs> no, warn them. Warn them. Or better still, warn your husband. Your husband, you see, your husband should be matured enough not to be entertaining calls of other ladies. Mm. Your husband should be matured enough. Look, a lot of this thing we do, when ladies say they want to communicate, they want to do this, most of the time I pass it on to my wife. So deal with my wife. She is the right person. Deal with her. Okay? It is safer. It is safer. Too many of us. We like playing with danger too yeah. much. <laughs> you are in a church. You are married. Sisters are calling you. For what? <laughs> I mean, for what? To share problems. <laughs> Why should the sisters be calling you? <coughs> Why should sisters be calling you? And you are married. You are hurting your wife, my brother. You are hurting your wife. Leave those sisters alone. You, you, you look. You see, one thing I, I have known in this life that I love a lot of ladies. Who, I, I see a lot of women. Oh, this one is nice. This one is beautiful. This one is like that. But I have come to understand that mm -hmm. you cannot marry oh, more okay. than one. Yeah. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know. You cannot marry more than one. Mm -hmm. So, once you have one, once you have one. Decide in your head that the rest cannot come on board. Mm -hmm. You will definitely meet women who look more beautiful. You will meet women who look more, more anointed, more this, more that, more that. But you have to decide in your head that since I have decided to choose this one, that is it. The rest must go. And if you want to enjoy this one, let me give you a secret. If you want to enjoy the one you have chosen, cut off the others. Otherwise, you will never enjoy this. 
The others. Part of the others. Because the others, you cannot have them fully because you are married. Mm -hmm. If you have to have them, you have to do it. Hide and seek, hide and seek. Always looking over your shoulder. Stressful. Waste of money and all that. And then you will come home to an angry wife, frustrated wife, who will also not give you her best. So you are stuck in between. Most men do not know what they are missing by not concentrating only on their wife. They don't know what they are missing. Because you cannot enjoy the one you are stealing completely. You can't bring it to public. If they catch you, they will stone you. And you can also enjoy your wife fully. Because when you come, your attention is on the other one out there. And if she knows that this is what you are doing, she's also angry with you. So she's not giving you her best and you are stuck in the middle. It is foolishness. Look, only a fool plays around with other women when he is married. Even if you are not having sex with them, you've got to be very foolish not to focus on your wife whilst you're playing, playing with other women. Hi, Charles. How are you? It's been a long time. <laughs> Please. Focus on your wife and you will see she is a gem. Focus on your wife and you will see she is beautiful. Every woman has beautiful aspects and ugly aspects. Every woman. But if you don't focus on her, you will only be seeing the ugly side. If you focus on her well, you will see, wow, my wife is this, my wife is that. You will see the beauty and the two of you can enjoy your marriage in peace. Life is not as long as you think, even if you live, you live to be a hundred. Life is not so long. Don't waste it fighting. Fighting with your wife, trying to look for other women you can't have because you're already married. Then there's always war at home. No, you are cutting short your life by that kind of attitude. Please, focus on your wife. Block the calls. If a woman calls you, if it's for an important reason, fine. But if you see they are just calling you for the sake of calling, let them know that they are not welcome. Some single ladies also do that. Excuse mm. my language. Mm. Some of the ladies, when they know that the man is married, they try to infiltrate. Some ladies in church are witches, I'm telling you. <laughs> they know their brother is married, but they will force themselves, force their way, force their way, try to pretend as if they are better than their wife, mm. undermine their wife with so many things. And that is wickedness. If you're a woman, you are not married and you are doing that, you are, you are harming yourself. Because that man is not going to leave his wife to come and marry you. And if he leaves his wife to come and but marry it's you, so sad. what I mean, you are having is a curse. Sometimes, you know that sometimes some women really think that the man will leave their wives and come and marry them. Yeah. Some of them really think that. But put yourself in that situation. If it is done to you, how would you feel? You will reap what you sow. If you cause a man to leave his wife and come and marry you, don't forget that whatever you used to, 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 to get him, you can't hold on forever. You will lose him also. Dignes, and I said, true witches and wizards. Oh yes, there are witches in church. <laughs> and there are wizards in church too. There are brothers in church oh, who know yeah. the sister is married. And yet and that is the one they want them, as a friend. Pursue them and pursue them. You know, you know, once when I was when I was um, expect, pregnant with one of our yeah. friends, a colleague I worked with said, oh, as for him, he loves pregnant women. <laughs> Pastor, in my own way, said, are you BB? Can you say, are you BB? Yeah, carry on, carry yeah. on. Yeah, this, this colleague of mine knows that I am a married man mm -hmm. and I was pregnant. And he said, he gets attracted to pregnant women. Can you imagine? I was so angry. And he sent one of the one of our colleagues to come and tell me, oh, I look really cute. And that, I mean, the way I am cute with the pregnancy, he's always attracted to me. And you should have said, reported him. What kind of nonsense well, well, is that? I did my wife. Yeah. <laughs> you are attracted to my wife. Pregnant wife. <laughs> <laughs> but no, 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 no. Let, let's all jokes aside. All jokes aside. Please, if you are a married man, have no female friend. If you are a married woman, have no male friend. Concentrate on your wife. Your wife should be your friend. Some of you men don't know how to make friends with your wives. <laughs> And some of you women also don't know how to make friends with your husbands. Make friends. That is how the marriage will last. Marriage is friendship. Marriage is advanced friendship. It's not just for the sex. It is for the friendship. So make sure that the friendship is stronger and stronger. And don't allow any third party to come between the friendship. Don't. Don't. Even in times where you are fighting, in times where you have disagreement, don't allow a third party to come in between. Don't allow a third party 
to come in between please one more share if you haven't done that so that we can reach yeah. out to a lot more if you people. haven't shared it please you'll be glad if oh, you, you can, can just click on the share button even if you have shared you can share it again so that we can heal some marriages and save some marriages people are struggling you have no idea the stories i hear the stories we hear that people are suffering in their marriages let us try and touch as many lives today we are tired but we still chose to come because people are suffering People, so you help us by sharing, by inviting friends, okay? All right. So when your, your spouse is giving their love to another person, it can be very painful. And, and it could be in different ways, like we've said. Mm -hmm. Spending time with them, text messages, dating them, going out on a date with them, talking to them mm -hmm. constantly, buying things for them, and all those things. Traveling with them. Yeah. Pastor Derek. Yeah. Some people amazing. do that secretly. They travel with their friends. The opposite sex and yeah. leave their wives or spouses yeah. behind. They say they are going to visit their mother in the village. And their mother is that young girl they've gone to put in the hotel. <laughs> their mother is and that, I pray that, their is that, is that young, young girl. girl. <laughs> I pray that when you take one of these girls to a hotel, she will turn into your mother. <laughs> and then you will see how it feels. Go to visit your mother in the village and then you are there with, with, with another girl. It's wickedness. You see, it is wickedness. Do unto others how you want to be treated. And one thing that guides my behavior as well is thinking about old age. The way you are treating your wife now. How confident are you that when you are old and let's say you are sick or you are in need, she will be happy to help you if she is strong. Some of you young men, the way you are treating your wives you are putting in too much wickedness. There's no love. There's no care. And if God does not help you in your old age, you will suffer. You see why some old men look abandoned. Their children abandon them. Their wives abandon them. Most of the time, it is how they behaved when they were young. The pastor question. When they Mike, felt on top. Mike is saying, what if your wife is not a, an outgoing person? Your wife does not have to be an outgoing person. You build the friendship with her. If she doesn't like to go out, find a way of staying in with her. My wife okay, and I... Let, let, let me, let, sorry, before you mm -hmm. say that. Mike, in answering your question, there are so many things I don't like that my husband likes. Mm -hmm. But you know that he has managed to get me into everything he does. Mm -hmm. If I say I'm not going out today, he has a way of making me go out mm -hmm. to for a, 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 a night out or something. If I say I don't want to watch this movie, he has a way of getting me to watch the movie. Mm. So study your wife and find a way of getting her to do the things yeah. I mean, you do so that both of you can do it together. It is, you see, we don't make enough for instance, effort. This, we this, don't this, invest. This broadcast, I was really tired and I was thinking, mm, let me know. He found a way of getting me in. Mm. So as much as possible, find a way of getting your wife. You can create an interest in your spouse Mm -hmm. uh, on the things you like, mm -hmm. you can generate an interest for them. So find a way of getting your spouse involved in the things you do. You see, you have to invest in the marriage. Oh. Don't just I, I conclude. Oh, my wife is not outgoing. You finish. No, you have to invest in her changing some things. Whilst you also invest in changing some things, right? You invest in her changing some things. Whilst you also change some things, so that your lives can blend. Marriage is blending two lives together. Mm -hmm. So if she's not the outgoing type, for example, you would have to find ways of you becoming the ingoing type <laughs> so that the two the of you in type. staying type, okay? <laughs> so you can invest in quality movies. If she's not outgoing, quality movies, instead of going out, we can stay at home and watch a movie. You can have a board game. My wife and I, we have a board game that we play in our bedroom and I win all the time, okay? We have, don't I? Yes. Sometimes. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, he, 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 he. I don't cheat. <laughs> so, we have a board game. If we can't go out, we have a board game that we play. Okay? We have, we have, thank you, Brother Isaac. He's a, Brother Ike, he's, he's a very powerful brother. He says, let's keep sharing. Let's hit 150 plus. Pastor, sorry, I've got a few questions. Just, I'm so sorry I have to interrupt you here. Okay. So, um, Nanadra is asking, what's the difference between marriage and engagement? And I responded that we've done a lot of videos on that. So if you could please watch our old videos or check our YouTube um, page. Yeah. You could, you could find The YouTube page things. is Pastor Derek and Pastor Selgelia Agri Solomon. But if you stay on my page, you go through you my, go through my videos. videos you, you, we you have done a lot. Yeah. But the, the, in short, engagement is preparation. It's the official notification that you want to get married. Okay? So it's different from the marriage itself. Okay. But in Africa, 
what they call engagement is actually yeah, traditional yeah, marriage. Yeah. It is marriage. marriage. Okay, so that that is it. The African kind of thing they call engagement. It is actually it's marriage. Yeah. It's marriage. You don't need a wedding for it to become marriage. Once a pastor comes and blesses it, if you're a Christian, then it is marriage. Okay. okay so now right. why is something saying something in But she said. Let's not forget how sweet we were, ladies, during courtship. Exactly. Our husbands love that sweetness still. Exactly. So when he's married you now, and that sweetness is no longer there, if he's not feeling that sweetness, sometimes that is what drives them yeah. out to the other lady who is now showing sweetness. Right. And Many women see, become like old witches if, after you've married them. Old witches. Father yes. <laughs> they are always grumpy, always angry, always chatting back, always crying, always moody, always argumentative. They don't dress well. <laughs> Yeah, because somebody talked about this. Yeah, many was, women. After you've married going, them, they don't dress well. I was going on that. Blessing is saying they value girlfriends that they are wives. Very sad. Because it's it's not... And, and my answer to that is not to support men valuing girlfriends. Mm -hmm. But it's because of what Pastor Derek is. Sometimes the girlfriends know that they, they haven't reached there. Mm -hmm. So they, 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 they are they're always on their toes. They are careful. They dress well. They are careful with they the way they talk. They are, they are careful with the way they talk to the man. The way they behave and all that, but the married woman, they know that yeah, I have the ring, then that's it. So yeah, so having the ring is not enough. You've got to still prep yourself, put yourself up. Yeah, I think these are the main. Oh no, no, so, sorry. Um, Jemima is saying deliberately buy. Is it Jemima? Yeah, deliberately buy your wife a dress and tell her you want to go out on a date out with exactly. her. Exactly. Or buy some flowers, put some flowers by the bed. Be creative. Creativity. Exactly. Creativity. Very, very important to be creative. So, there are things you can do in the house. Music, movies, games that you can do in the house. And then also, if she doesn't just like going, I think no woman will really reject. I'm taking you out for a, a, a cinema. I'm taking you out to a hotel. Uh, uh, for a few days, I'm taking you out for a walk on the beach. They say I won't go. I mean, I mean, is she a ghost? Mm -hmm. She she will go. She will go. Maybe she doesn't like always being out. But the few times, and you see, some women are not outgoing because you are taking them out into public. Like in some of you, you take your wives out and they get lost in the outing. Mm -hmm. Because your friends and other people are, are there. there, your family members are all yeah. there, and you abandon her. And that I is why that some women don't like following you out. If you, you know, women like privacy a lot. Yes. If you are taking her out and she knows that it's just going to be the two of you, she'll be willing to go. Yeah. So you taking her out doesn't mean go and dump her in public. But if you're taking her out, a hotel alone, a, a night out eating alone, to a movie alone, a walk on the beach alone, then cool. Also, also, some of you men do not invest in your wife's dressing. You want her to go out with you. When was the last time you bought her a dress? When was the last time you bought her a shoe? When was the last time you bought her perfume? When was the last time you bought her panties? When was the last time you bought her brassiers? When was the last time you bought her, you, 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 you paid for her to go and do her hair? You don't invest in her looks. And so sometimes your wife is literally shy of going out because it's the same dress. Last two weeks you went out, she wore that blue dress. Last week you went and she wore that blue dress. This week you should go out again. It's the same blue dress. I'm not going. It's a simple. So invest in your wife's appearance. Buy her things. Allow her to buy what she likes. Give her money to go for shopping. Okay? Then she'll be happy to wear it and follow you. Sometimes we men to apart. We are some of the reasons why some of these women don't do. Invest in your woman. Remember the marriage vow we just read? You said, I will give her all of my earthly possessions. Let your wife wear some of your money. Let your wife wear some of your income. <laughs> you close from work, pass by a shop. Every man must know your wife's size. You must know your wife's shoe size. You must know her dress size. You must know her brassiere size. You must know her panty size. You must know these things. Nighty size, you must know. So you buy them, you go out after work. Oh, uh, 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 I'm a little delayed, but I'll be, I'll, be in, I'll be in soon. You pass by a shop, buy one or two nice dresses. Not because it's her birthday. Not because it is a, your wedding anniversary. You just buy because she is your wife. I don't buy important things for my wife on anniversaries or in birthdays. No, I buy them on ordinary days, ordinary Tuesday, ordinary Wednesday. She'll just come home, boom, I bought this for you. And it's beautiful, it's nice. 
Okay, so let's invest in our wives. Know the size. <laughs> yeah, you must know the sizes. Some will say, hey, it's awful, a devil in size. Uh, <laughs> you must know the sizes of everything and invest. Buy them for her. She'll be happy to wear them for you and follow you wherever you want to go. I have so many comments here. Do you want me to read them? Okay, maybe a few, then we can move on. Hello, Mama. It's good to see you. Are welcome. Mommy Omega. Mama, Mama Omega. It's good to see you. Okay, quick, quick, quick. Sorry, if I'm not able to read all your comments, it's because there are so many of them. So, Koko is saying that you should try and buy things for a while, which we've, we've said that yeah. already. Um, Even is saying the reason why most marriages have become a problem is we are not mature before marriage, or we don't understand the reason why we marry, mm. we, we marry, which is also true. Now, Koko is saying there should be some conscious vulnerability to us women. I mean, like, I men like to go on a hunt with us. So church who wisely, which is true. Mm -hmm. Sami said it's you will take care to car race. <laughs> <laughs> and blessing is asking, is it okay for husbands to have personal private time? No. No. Of course, I have personal private time when I'm praying. When I'm studying my Bible, my wife knows that that is a very, very important time. She can't interrupt. Okay. So that. But I can't just say, oh, I'm just lying down. This is just me. I want to watch TV alone. I just want to go out alone. I just want to. That is wrong. Oh, Pastor, hold on, hold on. Coco is saying she has a friend like that and she can't drive because the man said he's using the money on a project. No. Your wife is your number one project. Your wife is your number one project. The project can delay a little. It doesn't matter if the project delays a little and your wife looks good. Never let your wife feel inadequate because of the project. Of course, I know that when you are doing a project, you have to sacrifice. I have done projects. You have to sacrifice. But it shouldn't be to a, an extent where your wife can't even go out. No, that is also wickedness. And then at least you, the man, you must sacrifice what you will spend on yourself and give it to your wife. Let your wife rather enjoy that. Okay. Right. Diana is saying true, so true. Alone time is precious. Not abandon her to make friends with your friends or wives, girlfriends, etc. Mm. Leave her to entertain herself whilst you chat or shop with your boys. Yeah, that, that is wrong. And Cynthia is saying, please share, 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 share. Good. Okay, so okay, are we are we Yeah, I think and Joy is saying different personalities find what works for her and commit to it. Mm -hmm. Then she'll commit to what sticks for you. She may not be outgoing because it doesn't take for her. Mm -hmm. Outgoing, uh, it doesn't take for her, but she'll do it for you if that takes for you. Outgoing is not necessarily a fun event for everyone. Mm. And then Dominic is saying, all of your money, Pastor. No, not just now. My wife gets the most of my money. That's a good husband there. Mm, now, Koa is saying, and when the men buy them, please, let's show super appreciation. Exactly. That is also true. <laughs> Pastor Bewa said, I shouldn't open my mouth. Some men know sizes of side cheese. Yes. Yes, so if you, know, if you can know the size of your side chick, why can't you know the size of your wife? You must know. You must know. I know my wife's sizes. Sometimes I forget some others, but I know the main ones, the dresses and the shoes and then the other ones. I know. You must know them. You must know them. Being a husband is not a joke. It's not a joke. Many think, oh, I saw a girl. I like her. I married her. No, it is work. It is a lot of work. And we struggle in our marriages because we don't invest in the work. We don't want to do the work. Okay? So let us let us work. Let us work. And another thing, just in connection with this, that 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 causes jealousy. Mm -hmm. Is when your husband is not spending on you, but he's spending on other people. Friends, family, colleagues. And he's not spending on it. Is it just the husband? How about the wife? The wife too can do it. Mm. Do you know that there are, there are families mm -hmm. where, like, the husband, he sponsors every one of his own sisters and brothers. Sometimes his sister, who is married, in and another, has, children. has her own children. He is supporting the, the sister who is married to the detriment of his own marriage. Yeah. Every time his wife asks for money, it is a fight. Yeah. But he's sending money to his sister, sending money to his uncle, sending money to his brother. Your wife Constantly. will be jealous. And when your wife is jealous and she is fighting you, she is right. That one, she, she even if she calls me, I will come and support her. <laughs> she is right to fight you as a husband. Your home first. Your wife, the Bible says that for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother, including his brothers and sisters. 
and cleave himself to his wife, and the two of them shall become one flesh. Hmm. The two shall become one flesh. So please, before you think of sending money to your extended families and your friends and your side chicks and whatever, make sure your wife has had enough of it. Make sure your wife lacks nothing from the kitchen to the bedroom to her dressing. Your wife must not lack anything. If she mentions she needs it, she must get it. She uh, is the queen. Can I stop mentioning sub now? What have you mentioned that you didn't get? <laughs> <laughs> if she mentions she must get. Uh, if she mentions she must get. Let unless me it think is, of something to mention. Unless it is getting. extremely outrageous. Okay, the fact that you say she should mention and get to you just mention unnecessary things. No, but whatever it is, make sure that your wife is taking care of so that she doesn't feel jealous. Yeah. She doesn't feel jealous and neglected. If she feels you are spending on this, spending on that, spending on that, and not on it, she will feel jealous and genuinely so, rightly so. Rightly so. So a lot of the arguments we have in our marriages, most of the time it is we ourselves who bring it on, on ourselves, and then we blame the devil. Yeah. And so that we blame our wife, that your wife is a witch. And you, if you like, do the thing she's asking you to do and see whether her witchcraft will not leave. Many of us, you think, oh, your wife is a witch. Do what she's complaining about. Just do it. Oh, and see whether Pastor, she will listen, not change. Listen to this. Dominic, I like this, Dominic. God bless you. He's saying you don't need a side chick. If you know your wife that much, no need for a side chick. Make your wife happy. And voila, she becomes your main dish as well as your side orders. That oh, is it. That's so beautiful. That is it. That is what, by God's grace, I'm trying to do here. And I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. It is so peaceful going around knowing that nobody's going to call, nobody's going to show up, nobody's going to bring anything. When I sleep, I sleep. I don't care about my phone call, who will call, and what they will say. My wife picks my calls. I have actually, no, I have actually diverted, I have put... Uh, call forwarding on my phone, right? Every call that comes to me, if I miss it, it goes to my wife's phone. It's simple. So if you're a woman, you're calling me, and I hardly pick my calls anyway. If I miss it, it goes to my wife, and she will know. When I sleep, I sleep. I have nothing to hide. Men, let us learn these things. Let us learn these things. It will make our wives happy, and it will be a blessing for us ourselves as well. Okay? Right. Mommy, one more thing that makes you okay. feel jealous yeah it's when you feel genuinely neglected mm -hmm. so sometimes you especially i mean no, it could be in, in different situations mm -hmm. you are not well mm -hmm. you are ill mm. talk, 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 you talk, are talk. ill your husband or your wife clearly knows you are ill i mean there's a program they, they want or maybe they have arranged to go and spend some time with a friend and you are not feeling well and you are in the they house. They just leave you. And they and just, go. yeah, they, they know you are not well. That's the time maybe you need them to do something for you. Or just to stay with you knowing that there's somebody around. Mm. They leave you and go and visit friends. Or maybe extended family. Or they leave you and go and have fun somewhere. When they know that you are genuinely not well. Or you are going through an issue where you need your husband. or Difficult you pregnancy. Wife. Yeah, you need your husband or your wife most. They will leave you. They, they, they just neglect it's like they don't care they don't care what is going on they don't care how you are feeling or they they travel they've traveled and gone somewhere and for a long time they are not around and they come and they have to go and see another friend or something and maybe you've been waiting for them you prepared a nice dish or something made their home nice and everything waiting for them they come and they're like oh i don't have time i need to go mm -hmm. it's so painful when you feel oh, neglected elsewhere yes. then also when uh you have Let's say you have a hospital appointment. You need to go to the hospital. And your husband is not there to go with you. Yes. Yeah. Let's say you are sick. You need to go to hospital. He's not there to go with you. You are pregnant. You have an appointment. He's not there to go with you. Children's school. The children have a school. Parents evening or something. I can't go. Then you, the mother, have to go. And so it looks like people even see you and it looks like you are a single mother. Meanwhile, there's a husband there. But this husband is never around to support you, you in anything. She's not there to, he's not there to help you with anything. 
He can be frustrated. And then sometimes just house chores. Yeah, yeah, simple things like house chores. You know the challenge, the husband challenge that you mm. that today do three mm -hmm. three house chores to help them. Mm. Sometimes they don't do that. The yeah. wife will wake up, clean the house, cook their food, take care of the children, do children's homework, attend other meetings and all that. And the husband is just there. Yeah. Maybe watching a movie or mm. playing computer games or on his phone, walking about chatting, you come, oh, where is my food? Why is my food not ready? Not helping mm. with anything at all. Mm. 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 It's but true. I think I'll read one more comment from Pastor okay. Mbewa. He's saying yeah. not to hold brief for this abominable act. However, mm -hmm. the people of the world know how to do this best. Mm -hmm. And their wives are cool with them, even in their wanton attitude without being jealous. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, some of these people, they, even though they are not Christians, they mm -hmm. know how to treat their wives yeah. better. Yeah. They know how to treat their husbands better. And one thing about some, sometimes, as Christian brothers especially, we hide behind spirituality. We hide yeah. behind praying in tongues. And we think that spirituality will cover everything. No, once you, and a lot of that spirituality is just human spirituality. God himself does not even see it as being mm. spiritual. Mm. You are just covering with, with big tongues. Bakatose. Makatose. Mm. Your wife's dress is torn. You are not mm. buying her a new one. Your wife needs care. You are not giving it to her. Your wife needs attention. You are not talking to her. You are not praying with her. You are not loving her. You are not playing with her. Yeah. And you just think that being spiritual means that yeah. she just has to. Many pastors' wives, many okay. spiritual brothers' wives are suffering. Yeah, Agnes is saying that you it's like you are married, but you are still single. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's that's called a married widow. Sorry, one. I have a You are married and still a widow. Michael is saying, does your wife does or say, or is only you, like all these things that we are saying, mm -hmm. does the woman also have a part to play or is just... Oh yeah, yeah. It, it works both ways. It works both ways. But in, in some of the areas, you see that it's the men who do it more. In some of the areas, it's the men who do it more. You know, one of the main things that women do that annoy their husband is the disrespect bit. Yeah. That disobedience bit, the chatting back bit. But apart from that, if a woman, I mean, women are naturally very caring. Yeah. One, it's only once a while that you find a woman who really is so rasta, that she doesn't care, she will abandon you. No, no, women are naturally not like that. They will play their role, but they are the ones that we deny them of that love, which is wicked and which is evil. Okay, mommy, under what circumstances is it wrong for us to feel jealous? Mm. Let's say when your spouse gets more praise for their looks mm -hmm. than you do. So let's say you end up marrying a woman who is very beautiful. you you the man you are like me, eh, eh, but your wife is very beautiful, eh, and everybody is talking about oh you are beautiful you are beautiful. You should not you shouldn't start feeling jealous that why everybody talks about her beauty so maybe she will run away with somebody or something. Don't be happy that people say your wife is beautiful. The opposite is also true. If you you are, you are a woman like me, eh. And your husband is very handsome, and everybody, oh, really? this is a handsome man, this is a nice man. You hear it from the, don't be jealous, don't, don't let it jealous. Feel, uh, be happy that God blessed you with a handsome man. Mm -hmm. But sometimes people get jealous about it, really. People do get jealous about it. Sometimes they get praise for some skill, some yeah, talent some they have, they, have yeah. Yeah. they get praise for some achievement. Mm. Your wife has finished a master's degree, and you haven't. And everybody thinks she's done well and you are there sweating. <laughs> it's not necessary. It's not necessary. Okay, so when your spouse gets more praise than you do in certain areas, you, you shouldn't uh, feel worried at all. And then when your spouse seems more spiritual than you are. Yeah, which is normal. You can't all be on, at the same spiritual level. One will definitely be higher than the other mm -hmm. because God calls people to for them to complement each other. Mm -hmm. So one will be higher spiritually than mm -hmm. the other, mm -hmm. and you shouldn't feel jealous. If mm -hmm. your husband is more prayerful than you are, just learn how to pray. But one thing I've seen is that the the other spouse who is not spiritual mm -hmm. ends up complaining rather. No, instead of complaining, ask your husband or your wife. How can I also get to the level? Because I learned a lot of prayer from you. I learned how to pray for longer time from you. You remember when we were courting? Every time I come to your house, you had locked yourself up and you were praying. You would just be there. I would sit down and wait for hours. And you would still not come out. And I could hear you in there praying. And I will leave a note that I was here and then go. So I decided, oh, this man knows how to pray longer and better than I do. Let me learn from him. So I learned, instead of getting jealous about that, learn the good things that your spouse know how to do or they have that you don't have. Just learn it. It will, it will help you. Yeah, but several times I've, I've seen some of these 
come up where people complain. People complain. Uh, yeah, so you are always in church. You are always. Because then I say celebrate their achievements as an achievement for you. Both. For you both, exactly. Yeah, for you both. Exactly. Are we sharing? Please, if you haven't shared it, I'll be glad if you can share it. I'll be glad if you can share share it for us. I think another reason mm -hmm. why people also feel jealous is when they feel their spouse earns more than they do. Yeah, that is a very, very serious thing. Mm. That's a very, very, very serious thing. Okay, look, Sammy Glory is saying, I remember the husband of Oprah complaining that people call him Mr. Yeah. Oprah. <laughs> he said his phone is freezing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, that, you, you've got to be very careful about that so that jealousy does not uh, uh, seep in. But especially where spirituality, mm -hmm. where one party looks more spiritual, especially it is men who complain when their wives are very spiritual. And I mean, their wife can pray. But, so, do you, sometimes the men complain because the wife use their spirituality to dominate or to bully dominate, them. Yes, or to look down on them. They feel, or sometimes to even. Be in charge of the marriage. Yeah. Now, as a wife, the fact that you are more spiritual than you are more spiritual than your husband does not mean you are the husband. Yeah. You are so still you are a still wife. Like, you see, spirituality is not that you are praying in tongues or no. you are praying long. Spirituality is that you are able to submit yeah. to your husband no matter your achievement. Yeah. That is true spirituality. Spirituality is that you are able to love your wife no matter how deep your tongues are. Mm -hmm. You are able to handle your wife with soft hands, with mm -hmm. soft gloves. Love her. Care for her. Let her feel appreciated. That is true spirituality. Mm -hmm. That is true spirituality. So we, we have to be very, very sensitive in this. Being spiritual is not that you blew tongues, baga, 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 then, then you are spiritual. No, no. So sometimes our spouses end up complaining and murmuring because we bully them with, with our spirituality. Our so called spirituality. Yeah. It, it, my wife, as she was saying, I pray. And so I can spend hours and hours in prayer. But I, when I come to her, I don't behave spiritual. She's my wife. Mm -hmm. I play, I talk to her like a normal person. I crack jokes. I tell her funny things for her to laugh all the time. Okay? So let us aim to separate those two so that your wife or your husband doesn't feel jealous because of your spiritual uh, 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 things. Okay? And um, another thing, another area to where you must not feel jealous is where your spouse seems to be getting more opportunities. Yeah, they, they may have more opportunities because maybe of talents mm -hmm. or even attitude. Yeah. You know, sometimes your attitude will open, open, a lot doors, of, open yeah. doors for you. So if your spouse is being given more opportunities because of one thing or the other, mm -hmm. don't be jealous. Mm -hmm. Because remember that the two are one. Yeah. The two are one. So if your spouse is getting the opportunities, it's also in your favor. You are also getting those opportunities yeah. in one way or the yeah. other. So work as a team. Yeah. Work as a team so that you will not have this okay now let's go on to the effects of jealousy pastor we didn't talk about that wait wait before we go to the effects of jealousy one okay. more thing when your spouse earns more than you do mm -hmm. it can cause a lot of jealousy in the marriage mm -hmm. especially you know men usually because they have ego mm -hmm. and naturally they are made to dominate mm -hmm. so when they are not earning as their wives are or maybe their wives are earning more than they are earning mm -hmm. and they don't take it it can breed a lot of jealousy yeah. in, the, in their marriage so we mm -hmm. need to check that as well and the woman too if you're earning more than your your husband mm -hmm. it doesn't mean you should disrespect him yeah. or you should be in charge of the relationship or order him about mm -hmm. or tell him what to do yeah still stay humble yeah you because see, situations <laughs> can change at any time you may be boss at work but you are not boss at home a wife is a wife. A husband is a husband. Okay, it, these are spiritual rules. Once you take one, make sure that you live by it. Make sure you live by it. But I want us to go into the effect of jealousy. What does jealousy do? If you haven't shared it, please share. If you haven't invited friends, please invite friends. When you allow jealousy, because like I said from the beginning, mommy, jealousy is a spirit. Mm -hmm. Jealousy is a spirit. Now, when you allow the spirit of jealousy. To enter your heart, what are the effects? What are the things that jealousy can I mean, do? Jealousy is self-destructive. Mm. Very, very self-destructive. You remember when he came on Saul? Yeah, he was, he was he, ready to kill. He was ready to, and jealousy has caused people to kill. Jealousy has caused people to kill. It, it can lead to self-destruction. Because when you are jealous, you don't think well. Mm -hmm. When you are jealous, your emotions are taking over your senses mm -hmm. your heart mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. your heart. The Bible says that the heart of man is desperately wicked. Mm-hmm. You can have poor behavior. You can exhibit poor behavior. You could lose your honor. You could lose your position at church. You could mm-hmm. speak anyhow. You can be rude. You could destroy things. Mm-hmm. So it's very, very dangerous. It's self-destructive. And we have to be very careful of that. So when jealousy gets into you, it's a spirit. Yes. It gets into your heart. It will destroy you. Don't forget. In John 10.10, 10, the Bible says that the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy the thief which is the devil he came at number four to steal to kill and to destroy so when you allow satan never comes into your heart to make things good allowing jealousy in your heart i don't mean positive jealousy negative jealousy in your heart means that you are opening the door for the destroyer to come in you're opening the door for the destroyer to it affects your behavior Mm -hmm. when you get jealous you cannot think straight you can't think straight when the woman sang that David has killed his Thousand. ten thousands and Saul has killed his thousands, immediately Saul felt he was no longer the king of Israel. Yeah. Even though he was still the king of yeah. Israel. Yeah. So jealousy enters your heart. You you feel you have already lost your wife, even though she's still here with you. Mm-hmm. That if you knew a better way of dealing with the situation, you yeah. can win your wife back. Yeah. Because you know, David was not David was not into fight with Saul over the no, there. no, David didn't have any idea of becoming no. king, taking over the kingship. Not at all. But so, so sometimes jealousy enters your heart mm. and you start you start behaving towards your wife as if she has left you or yeah. your husband as if she has already divorced you. Yeah. When actually there's nothing like that. In. Yeah, there's nothing, there's no cause for alarm. So like, by acting on your jealousy, you rather cause that situation to, to happen. happen. Yeah. So you start fighting unnecessarily. You start pursuing you know, things you don't. Because you know the Bible says, Job says, the thing that I feared has come upon me, and jealousy brings fear yeah. into the marriage. Yeah. Jealousy when, is a product of fear. Yeah, when you are jealous, you start getting afraid of what will happen. Will mm-hmm. she leave me? Will he leave me? Will that happen? Will that happen? And eventually, because you are entertaining that, that thought, fear, you will or that act thought, in a way that will propel that situation. Because when, because place. when you when you start getting into that mood you start thinking about it mm-hmm. as a man thinketh in his heart mm-hmm. so is he mm-hmm. so as you think about it you realize you start acting it yeah. before even knowing yeah by the time you come to your senses it has happened mm-hmm. and whatever you feared would have happened yeah. to you all because you were jealous yeah yeah very important so so we've got to learn how to control jealousy We've got to learn how to control jealousy. It affects your behavior. You can't laugh with people. You can't smile with people. Your, your, your attitude changes. You become moody. You become gloomy. Uh, any other person who you think is contributing to that thing becomes an enemy automatically. It affects your health. Do you know jealousy affects your health? Yeah. Your mouth becomes bitter. You can't eat. You can't sleep. You can't sleep. Uh, what's he saying? Uh, or Sebon saying, I'm really sad. Only since oh, I watch it. Was at 95. Don't worry. People it went up to go. 95. People so come and go. you Don't can worry. share it. You can invite more friends. More people will come as 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 we carry on. Okay, right. So it can affect your health. Mm-hmm. It puts down your immune system. Mm-hmm. It suppresses your immune system and it causes you to easily get sick. You, when you get jealous, mommy, when you get real jealous, yeah. you begin to develop boils, pimples. Really? Yes. Mm-hmm. All sort of rashes because your immune system goes down. Awesome. It begins to affect so many areas. You begin to get unnecessary headache. You can be developing diarrhea or constipation depending on which chemicals are triggered in your brains. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it's no good. It is no good. It can make you lose your honor. Mommy. When I was a child. I thought as a child. No. When I was a child. <laughs> you were jealous. The company that my father worked with. Mm-hmm. Right. There was a German engineer. Mm-hmm. And a Ghanaian engineer. Right. right? It, no, I know, there were lots of engineers. My father was also one of the engineers. But there were some German, German engineers there. One German engineer. And then the, this Ghanaian engineer. His wife was white. Okay. His wife was white. But he was Ghanaian. Mm. And then this German engineer too was there. And I think by virtue of their color, this German engineer started communicating more with the, white. the, the white woman, the Ghanaian uh, man's wife. Mm. And the Ghanaian man got angry. They were having end of year manager's party. Mm-hmm. Right? And the German man went to dance with the Ghanaian man's wife. Mm-hmm. This man got jealous. 
broke a beer bottle, stabbed the German. Ooh, this was in Ghana. Goodness. Stabbed the man in anger to an extent that they had to bring police in, they had to arrest the man, go put him in police cell, all because was jealousy. Good. There wasn't anything happening. Eventually, that marriage broke down. Oh, the yeah. man was never the same again because of jealousy. But maybe by, by virtue of color attraction, yeah. they are just dancing, but there might not, there might not be anything in it. This woman saw you and loved you and married you. Irrespective of what is going on. So sometimes we've got to be very, very careful how we allow these things to get into us. It can disgrace you. Jealousy can make you act in a way that will bring you complete dishonor. Mm -hmm. It can make you lose your position at church. You can behave or at work. You can behave in a way that you disgrace yourself and you will be demoted. Mm -hmm. It can bring depression. Yeah. When you follow jealousy, you can get so depressed. When you allow jealousy to, to take depressed. over your mind, you can get depressed as you keep thinking and thinking and thinking. It can lead you to become alcoholic. Yeah. You start drinking, you start drinking, you start drinking. And before you realize, you are stuck. It can lead you into drugs. It can lead you into pornography. It can lead you into extramarital affairs. Because some of you think, because my wife is doing it, I'm let also me also go and do it. it. It can even lead you to commit suicide. Because my husband is doing it, let me also go and do it. To spite him. Meanwhile, maybe he's not he even doing do it. But even if he's doing it, that is not the way to react. Hmm. Because the fact that Somebody is doing the wrong thing. Doesn't mean you must also go and destroy yourself. The Bible says that if we do as an adulteress, God will judge. How mongers and adulteress, God will judge. So God will judge your husband for what he's doing, but God will judge you too for what you are doing. Yeah. The fact that your husband committed fornication, that's why you also went to commit fornication. Does not mean God will say yours is forgiven. Mm -hmm. You you also be judged if your husband is going to hell for his fornication. You are also going to hell for your fornication. Because your husband fornication does not certify yours. Let me read um, something nice from Osaibo. So he said, my okay. wife earns more money than me. She mm -hmm. is more educated than me. But I'm really proud of her. And I do ah. my best as a man of the house. Some people need a lot of education before they get married. He said he does his best yeah. as a man. Of yeah. I like that. That is I awesome. Like that. He does that is his awesome. best as a man of the house. That is awesome. That is awesome. Another thing that jealousy does is that if you don't rule it that marriage will be destroyed because pastor you know when when you become when jealousy takes over your heart mm. you can't genuinely love your spouse yeah exactly you, can, you can't genuinely it, love your spouse and you then, shut down yes and the foundation for a successful marriage is, is love. love so when the love is not there you can't genuinely love you, you rather become bitter yeah you can't flow you can't talk you can't have fun together. You can't have intimate moments together because you are you are so jealous. Your heart is so full of jealousy, yeah. evil. You can't do anything right in the you marriage. You become cold. The marriage is frozen. Eventually, it will break down. And when you freeze it, for, for how long can it be left frozen? For how long can the marriage be left frozen? So when you leave it frozen for a period, it's only a it's matter of time. Break down. It will drop down yeah. and die. Okay. Marriage can also destroy jealousy. Sorry, jealousy can also destroy the other party. When you feel jealous, you mm -hmm. now start gossiping about people. Do you know that a lot of slandering and gossip that takes place is it's because we are jealous. jealous about people? Yeah, in church, most of the time, people gossip about other people because they are jealous of them. In the workplace, people gossip about other people because they are jealous of them. In the same way, in the marriage. When you start getting jealous that your wife is doing something, now you start speaking evil of her. Yeah. Your family members Sad. call. Your family members call. How is she? Mm. Oh, how is your wife? Mm. Mm. That woman. That, that woman. Witch. That witch. She is this. She is that. She is that. <laughs> so now you start talking evil about her, even when there is no truth in what you are saying. Okay? You start talking. If you haven't shared it, please share it. If you haven't invited friends, please do. Right? You start talking evil about the same person you claim to love. You don't say any good thing about her. You slander her or him as well. Some of you do it to your husbands too. And so that becomes very evil, very, very bad. You also start accusing. If your husband comes home late, immediately you think that your husband is late because he went he to went do something. Somewhere. So you start fighting him straight away. You are this, you are that. That's why you are in at this time. Meanwhile, that might not Maybe, be the case. Yeah. yeah. 
that might not be the case at all okay so we've got to be very careful about that it can also make you destroy others who are genuinely what sometimes somebody is genuinely your husband's friend they don't have anything any evil yeah. motive yeah. yeah yeah but you can get angry with them you can call other people and talk to them about this other party that that person is the one breaking your marriage mm-hmm. when she doesn't even know she's doing and that maybe too she's the one who is actually telling your husband not to not to, to go to, not to love to, you and yeah, cherish yeah. you yeah, maybe she's the person who is actually talking for you yeah. in your favor. Yeah. But because of jealousy, mm. you end up destroying her or causing problems for her. And exactly. you end up losing everything. So that that is very, very important. We've got to care, uh, uh, be conscious about how jealousy can destroy our lives. It can lead to murder. You can go kill somebody that you suspect is involved with your wife yeah. or your husband that you don't even know. I was going to say something I wouldn't say mm-hmm. because in Africa, these, these are some of the things that make people go visit all these spiritual people. Yeah, because they, they are suspecting that somebody is doing something. They here. suspect somebody is following their, their husband, husband so they go to a spiritual something. man to kill them for them. <laughs> or sometimes people hire hitmen, yeah, kill this kill. person for me. Yeah, because of jealousy. Sometimes there's nothing, there's nothing, and yet you right. can easily commit murder. It can also lead you to destroy your property. And destroy yeah. other properties because you know sometimes jealousy goes with anger yeah it, it always goes with anger and when you are angry you do things you yeah. do things without thinking anger is the introduction to madness yeah you just do things you can break anything you can destroy anything because you're just it's really a very dangerous thing we need to take care we need to i mean keep an eye on yeah that we don't allow it to get into our marriage right so so when you allow jealousy in your heart you could burn your house down it you could also, burn your house. You can destroy your children. Too. You can, like I said at the beginning, you can kill your child. Your child. I, I just recently, a man was jailed for killing his own child. Recently, it happened in Germany also. A man killed his own child to spite the wife, because the wife was leaving him. So I'll kill my children. I'll kill our children. It happens all the time. Happens all. I'll kill our children so that none of us will not will, 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 will lose them. It's a dangerous place. Do not allow jealousy in your heart. Don't allow jealousy to take place in your heart because it will destroy you. It will destroy you. Don't allow it. Do not allow it at all. Now, mommy, how do we deal? How do we deal with jealousy? You want us to do a part three? You want us yeah. to end here and deal, deal with part because three? Because it's a lot. I don't want us to rush through it. How to deal with jealousy? Jealousy is a very... It's a serious thing we need to work on. All right. Okay. Okay. Fine. If you have any questions, we will just answer it quickly. Then we will pray and then we will end it here. No, God willing, next week we will do the part three and finish it. There are a few questions, Pastor. There are a few questions. Okay. She's saying, my question is maybe you're in a relationship with a man and the man likes too many friends. What do you do? It is no good. Talk to him about it. Pray that God will help him. But talk to him about it that it is no good. Not because you are jealous. But it will destroy the marriage. Too many friends. In Ghana, there's a saying that too many friends did not allow the crab to have a head. Okay? Friends are not good. You must have a few friends, but not too many friends. Kabina is saying, scientifically speaking, Pastor D is dope. Well versed in this topic. <laughs> right, we, we thank God. Any, any more? Lottie is saying he's constantly putting you down. If he's always hurling insults at you and it seems that nothing... It seems that nothing you do is acceptable. He is displaying classic jealousy symptoms. He's trying to make you feel bad about yourself. So you think he's the only man who will ever love Yeah, we discussed that last week. We discussed this particular one last week. All right, great. Great, okay. Okay, so I think that we're going to pray. And then uh, we are ending early today. We are ending quite early. Yeah, a little early today. Really? Yes, it's but we're gonna pray. Hours, we're gonna pray. Uh it's just one and a half hours, I think. All right, okay, fine. We're gonna pray. So, mommy, you're gonna pray. Uh what are you gonna pray on today? Um something about jealousy. <laughs> All right. Before oh hello Andre. Hello Andre, how are you? Hi, Andre. Uh, Silverline is saying uh, how do you deal with family members who are jealous of you but trying to be nice to their brother? Uh, you pray them out. You pray them out. Prayer works, you know. Prayer works. You pray them out and you deal with them very wisely. Don't show. Don't show that you know that is what they are doing because 
then it will make things even become worse. Uh, okay, or say, or say, Bones saying, Abigail, if you force a man to stop going out with friends, it will never help in the long run. Yeah, you don't force, but talk to him about it. Talk to him about it. Right, brothers and sisters, if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, if you are not born again, then we wouldn't want to finish this broadcast without giving you the opportunity to give your life to Jesus. Irrespective of all the noise you hear out there, Jesus is still real. Because sin is real. And the only antidote to sin is Jesus Christ. It is appointed unto man once to die. After that, there will be judgment. We will all die one day and we will have judgment. The only thing that will help us escape judgment is Jesus Christ. Right? Jesus is the only one who will give us access to heaven. If you don't have him as your Lord, I don't mean you just are a nominal Christian. If you don't obey Jesus, you don't humble yourself to Jesus and obey his word, seriously, heaven will not be your home. Why don't you allow Jesus to come into your life and be your Lord today? If you haven't done that before, or maybe you've been a Christian, but you, you drifted off and now you're coming back. You want to give Jesus a better chance in your life. We can still pray this prayer. Just pray, Lord Jesus, thank Lord you. Jesus, thank you. For dying on the cross for me. For the cross Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving I accept me. the salvation. I, accept I receive it with all joy. Forgive me of my sins. Me of my Cleanse sins. me with your precious blood. Your Write my name in your book of life. Fill me with your spirit. Me with your spirit. Lead and guide me and guide until me. the day I meet you face to face. Thank, Thank you for saving me. Thank you for making heaven my home. You are forever my Lord. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Now you become born again. If you've prayed this prayer, why don't you just, uh, you can message me, but most importantly, find a good Bible believing church around where you are. If you live in London, Southeastern uh, London, Southeastern England, Kent, you can come to our church, Shine Ministries. We meet in the Bexley Heath Academy, Bexley Heath Academy, in the upper main assembly hall. We meet there Sundays, 10 a.m., uh, 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 Friday 7 p.m. Wednesdays we have our home cell uh, Bible studies or sometimes you are more than welcome to, to visit more than welcome to make us your home church if you don't have a good church but if you have a good church around where you are or if you live far from us by all means find a good church there are lots of good churches out there find a good church commit yourself be faithful to the pastor don't listen to people be faithful to the pastor stand with him because it will be a blessing for you Okay, buy a Bible, read it and pray every day. Grow in Christ because you will not regret doing that. The address has been put on the screen. So mommy, you're going to pray. I want us to pray for people whose marriages are struggling because of jealousy. People whose marriages are struggling because of jealousy. Uh, uh, as the Spirit leads you, whichever way, I just want you to pray. Okay. And then I will also That's pray and we'll finish. Yeah. Father, we want to thank you in the name of Jesus yeah. for this broadcast today. Mm. We thank you for what you have taught us about jealousy. Mm. Lord, today we want to pray. I specifically want to pray for wives this, yeah. uh, this time, Lord, who are struggling with jealousy. Mm. Jealousy because of things their husbands have done for, to them, mm. things they are expecting their husbands to do, but they haven't done. Yeah. And uh, sorry, every kind of pain they have been through, and mm. that is causing jealousy in their husbands. Mm. Lord, I pray for healing in the name yes. of Jesus. You are the only one who can comfort. You are mm. the only one who can help. You are the only one who can heal. Yeah. And I pray for that healing for every wife, mm. for God, going through or struggling with jealousy. Mm. For every mother struggling with jealousy. For every daughter struggling with jealousy. Mm. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, I pray that you come to... Mm. It is a spirit. It is not of you. Yeah, yeah, it is a yeah, demon. Yeah. We bind it in the name of Jesus. Mm. We cast it out of your daughters, out of our mothers, of out Jesus. of their wives, out of our sisters in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, for a pure heart, yes. a heart that loves, yes, a heart that cares to God, yes, a heart that is not full of jealousy, yeah. a heart that is selfless yeah. for your for, for the wives for the yeah. women oh god for yeah. the mothers who are struggling with mm. it and lord i pray for peace of mind mm. because sometimes this jealousy takes over their minds yeah. god, and causes confusion and peace but we thank you that you are not the god of confusion and yes. you have not given us the spirit of fear but of a sound mind yeah. and i pray for a sound mind for the wives yeah. god sound mind for the mothers for the yes, daughters lord. who are struggling with jealousy deliver yeah. them oh god yeah. and give them the peace of mind yeah. and a pure heart yeah. we thank you and we bless you in jesus Jesus in the name, name of Amen. Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we continue to pray. Continue to pray for all marriages. We pray for husbands as well. Lord, I'm lifting up husbands before you. Father, I pray that you 
release wisdom unto our husbands every man listening to this broadcast or who will listen to it later oh god who is a married man i pray oh god for the husband of the uh, the wisdom of the leader the wisdom of being an effective husband so they'll be conscious and careful in the way they treat their wives so their wives will be the precious single woman in their lives that they will not frustrate their wives oh god i pray for divine wisdom for our husbands oh god for our wives i pray again the demons of, 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 of misbehavior, carelessness, this loyalty, uh, uh, adultery from these marriages in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray against the attacks of the enemy that blindfold men and make them make choices that are so stupid just to destroy their families only for them to look back years later and know that they have wasted some precious thing. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that your men of God will be kept away, kept safe from such demonic activities. We come against every whisper of a strange woman into the ears of this man that would draw their hearts and their attention and their affection from their wives in the name of Jesus Christ. We come against any polluted drink, any polluted food that would drive the hearts of the husbands away from their wives in the name of Jesus. Tonight, today I stand in here and I break every association with any husband connected to this broadcast and that and the association that works contrary to their marriage any association with any husband that was contrary to their marriage I break the association any friend who is a bad influence on any husband connected to this broadcast in the name of Jesus I separate that friend from that man in the name of Jesus Christ anybody influencing any man to misbehave in his marriage I remove them from the scene in the name of Jesus Christ Father I pray that you draw the heart of any man listening to us or even if they are not listening but if they are wife has listened or is listening, any man connected to this broadcast whose heart has gone cold towards their wife, let there be a renewal, let there be a revival. Any man who is now beginning to see this woman as an evil person instead of that beautiful flower he saw years ago, Lord, renew their mind, renew their vision, bring their hearts and their understanding back to their wives help them, oh God, to revitalize this love, oh God, we speak renewal into marriages, we speak love into marriages, Lord we lift up marriages that are struggling because of health issues Lord, I pray for your intervention we lift up marriages that are struggling because of external family members and other things Lord, intervene, we lift up marriages that are struggling because of childbearing issues oh god i pray that you release children onto any couple that are trusting you for a child i pray lifting up marriages that are struggling because of finances because of a job issue father i pray for miraculous provision in the name of jesus any marriage that is struggling because of visa issues the husband is stuck in one country the wife is stuck in another country oh god make a way for them make a way for them make a way for them in the name of jesus christ lord i lift up your sons and your daughters before you we can do nothing without you we depend on you we depend on your help we depend on your grace let your grace be released towards our hearers oh god let their marriages flourish oh god let their marriages increase oh god let them enjoy their marriages oh lord lord i lift up any brother and sister who is not married yet and is trusting you oh god you are the one who does that which is impossible you are the one who makes a way where there seems to be no way lord you've done it for countless others and you will do it for them also therefore do it oh god settle them you are the one that starts the solitary oh god into families. Do so for our brothers and sisters, oh God. Not painful marriages, oh God, but peaceful and glorious marriages. Nothing is impossible with you. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. God increase you. God make his face shine upon you. May he lift up his countenance towards you. May he glorify himself in every area of your life. And until we come your way again, tomorrow is Sunday. Make sure you go to church. Be faithful in your church. Be faithful to your pastor. Stand with your pastor to advance the kingdom of God. But throughout the week, love your wife. Love your husband. Have fun in your marriage. Enjoy each other. For this is the lot of man. That is what King Solomon said. God bless you. Till we come your way again. Shalom. Bye-bye. Thank you, Professor Thank you.